everyone, and welcome to the Land Show. We have got a great show lined up for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the Apple Vision Pro. Luke will be having his first hands-on yeah. experience with it. I've got it in my backpack. Beautiful. So we're going to see your beautiful eyes. It'll be yours. Uh, yeah. It'll be. <laughs> Don't worry, they're blue for some reason. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the Canadian government who did something spectacularly either stupid or awesome, depending on your perspective. Sure. I mean, someone obviously thinks it's awesome. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. What else we I got today? So. Uh, did I take yours again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you stopped for one week and now it's just gone. Uh, where, 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 there, there was one. Uh, yeah, deep fake scam boosts twenty five million dollars. For those of you who are new to English, especially Ooh. young people, English boosts means steals. Steals. Yeah. What else you got? That was that was absolutely wild. Also, I, I don't know. I'll pick this one. Funimation libraries to be deleted, which is bad. That's a bummer. That means initial D. I'm surprised you didn't take Florida Man kicks kids off social media. That just sounds like a good idea. The show is brought to you by Grammarly, AG1, and UPDF. Why don't we jump right into our headline topic, which is, of course, nothing. We named the show after... Your face. My face. Be actually, oh, I guess we should talk about that. Yeah, that is a topic. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. How did you not take that one? I left you the juiciest... <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I, I was all... Toss, I get, I and get, you were like, usually, whiff. usually you always take the headliner, <laughs> and you yeah. skipped it. So I didn't even like realize that no, was still man. available. But yeah, no, it was. Man. It totally was. Um. So, have I told you why? No. Oh, great. Okay. I was, uh, if I remember correctly, I was actually legitimately waiting for the show to ask. Dan, do you know that's why how life works now? I think I had it spoiled for me. Yeah. Okay, then don't say anything. I won't. Uh, let's let Luke guess. We can let chat help you because they don't know. So anything they say is just complete profound can ignorance. I, can I give a? Can I give Luke a no, hint? No, nope. I haven't even get. You can maybe eventually, can but give not, Luke not a before hint? I've even I mean, started. Th well, that's disrespectful. <laughs> like, does he just? Does he have a very hintable do face? Do I look? Do I have a <laughs> very hintable face? <laughs> just looks like he needs hints. <laughs> oh man! Uh, my first initial reaction was got a strong brow furrow. <laughs> <laughs> my my first initial reaction was that it might have been something to do <laughs> with uh, needing to have like a, a mask or something. No, nope. because you can't with beards. Okay, you nope, weren't doing not. anything like that. Um, I want to give why, my that's hint. Why a lot of firefighters have mustaches. I want to give way. my hint. Oh, because the the mask can. I thought it was just so they could give rides. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they probably do that a lot, but no, the uh, yeah, the mask can go along the the outside mm -hmm. of your face, and you can still have a mustache because it doesn't have to stick there. Got it? Makes sense. Uh just got tired of it. Yvonne, what does Yvonne think? I don't think you can ask questions. I, can't I ask think that? you can just. I think you can just ask reasons. Did Did Yvonne suggest it? No. Okay. Uh, were you just tired of it? Nope. Were you curious to see what it looked like? No. Nope. Because it's been too long. It's been three long. It's been three long. Three years. Yeah. That's that, was, that was a COVID beard. It's a really long time. I that know, sense. right? It feels, yeah, the, the whole COVID timeline thing has ruined my brain. Um, no, it's not Apple Vision Pro fitting. No, no. No, no. no. Apple Vision Pro is totally ski goggles, and this is totally yeah. neck warmer. Yeah. All right, Dan, give my uh, hintable face some information. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know how we were talking about Linus's Porsche last week? It's better than hittable face. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay. Uh, my understanding is it's very similar reasons to why he um, modified his windshield wipers. 
Okay, I could kind of see where you're going with this, but I don't think that's going to help him very much. I, I didn't say it was a good hint, but I thought you might find <laughs> okay, that so funny. It was like the, the cheaper way of doing something, but how does that make any sense? Uh, Linus gets it. Linus gets it. <laughs> I love this. There's thousands of people experiencing this, and only two of them get the joke right now. I this feel is special. a great show. I feel special. Dan, you're a special, you're a special can I, boy. Can I get a, a, another hint? I, I'm trying to think of, like, do I call in like I a I might as well just tell you. There's absolutely no way you're ever going to get it. Okay. So I booked a hydrofacial. I have no idea what that it's is. It's basically just like a skin treatment so for your face. water on your face? No. Is it waterboarding? <laughs> No, it's definitely not waterboarding. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got a hydrofacial and sure. um, I I contacted them ahead of time. I was like, so like, how, how does it work with the, the hair? And they were like, uh, well, it obviously doesn't work anywhere where you have facial hair. And I was like, okay, well, is the price different? And Why is like, that obvious? And they're like, no, the price is the same. And I was like, okay, so the price is the same regardless of how much face you treat. <laughs> Like, I gotta get my value. I respect that. Yeah, I respect that. Are you gonna grow it back? You know what? I didn't get my value, though, because what I realized after I shaved it was, even though I had intended to do it anyway, I could have gotten Dbrand to pay, like, an enormous Absolutely. amount of money to yeah. have me shave my beard on WAN show or something. Especially if you left mustache for a certain period of time. So stupid. Yeah. I can't I can't believe. I can't believe it. I am. Yeah, that was kind of, that, that, that was slash is kind of surprising to me. And one of the most, like, based takes I've seen so far was our, our own Mark Rathberger. Ma- Rath Gaber. Gaber. Rath Gaber. Okay. I realize I've never said his last name out loud. Yeah, it's right fine. Then. He gets that a lot. I know. I, he's told, told me, Rathberger. He gets that all the time. It's Rathgaber. I knew. I grew up with someone with him with that last name. So my brain just defaulted to it. Anyways, uh, he said, if this is real, why wasn't it sponsored? Yeah. That's fair. It's a, it's a fair take. I'm actually a, very surprised. It's a, fair, it's a fair take. That you didn't combine those two things. Because the, the, the one of like, you know what? I'm going to get my full value out of this. Totally understand. Yep. But I'm surprised that your brain didn't also go, not only will I get full value, but I will now make money yeah. off of this Yeah, process. I mean, we could have we, we upgraded some workstations or whatever, you know. Uh, it was a miss. It was a miss. <laughs> okay. S- speaking of misses. My wife, yeah. no, just kidding. Um, let's talk about the Apple Vision Pro. No, 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 no. What does she think? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, she liked the beard, didn't she? She likes the look of the beard but definitely prefers the snuggle ability of not a beard. So for her, it's kind of, I think it's like a 55% beard, 45% not beard. Got it. But now that the beard has been a thing for a while and she's going back to not the beard. It's kind of fun for a bit. No. Oh. No, no, not even a little. It's, oh. I, th- I think it's when we went from this to that, it was like, oh yeah, the beard looks a little better. Now that we go from beard to this, it's like, <laughs> so you're growing it back, right? <laughs> So is, are you growing it back then? Uh, yeah, but not yet. Oh. Soon. Why not yet? Because um, the, uh, the hydrofacial is just a lead up for like a pokey thing that oh, they're, they're going to do. Sure. Yeah, so it's like some pokey thing. It's uh, supposed to... Um, Facial acupuncture? It's, it's supposed to stimulate like collagen production or something like that. Like basically, I'm looking at it going, okay, I'm almost 40. Um, I'm not into, I'm not into like, oh, I'm going to get a bunch of fillers and a nose job or whatever else. But from a certain point of view, um, I have like never done anything other than just rub soap on my face and I'm looking at it going, okay, so this is kind of like being 40 and never having gone to the dentist. It's like, yeah, I brush my teeth, but like I, so I'm like, okay, you know what? A little bit of maintenance. I'm going for it. So I've got a couple things and then I'm going to grow my facial hair back okay. and cover it all up. Yeah, there you <laughs> so go. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, sure. Uh, <sighs> you ready? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess so. All right. You guys are going to see it here first, guys. Raw, raw impressions. I'm like, I'm like kind of nervous. I don't know why. Well, because if your take on it is wrong, <laughs> then you're going to have people calling you an idiot. And if your take on it is right, that isn't why then you're going to have the other half of people calling you an idiot yeah. because this is an extremely divisive product. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So first up, first up. It's an extremely divisive device. 
here it is. The Apple Vision Professional. Professional. Not to be confused with the regular Apple. Are you going to take it? Or? Oh, yeah. I thought Not to be confused up. with the regular Apple Vision. Is this just, it's one size for everybody? Situation? Um, okay. So you do a facial scan thing, but your nose kind of shape coming out of your face is like pretty not that far off mine. I suspect this thing will probably be mostly okay for you. Maybe a little bit on the small side, because um, I'm like a small medium helmet, and I think you're more like a yeah, large. Yeah, but the, whatever the, um, uh, I don't remember what the brand of that VR headset was that I tried at your house, but that felt pretty well. Oh, really? So the uh, b big screen beyond? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that did fit you okay. Okay, yeah. then you'll probably be I was more wondering about the So that has a dial. size. Oh, okay. Yep. So you just play around with the dial, and uh, once you put it on, it should basically turn on. But before you do, before you do, let's, let's get your impressions. All right. So it's got, the, it's got the protective cover on the front. It comes with that. You can just pop that off. Material-wise, feels premium. I don't know. The headband. Is, mm. Really? Okay, yeah, there's two options for the headband. There's the also headband doesn't this feel one. not premium, to be clear. There's one oh. that has a, a top. So there's the, like... A top strap as well. Diaper yeah. band. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it a diaper band, but sure. Sure. Yeah. They could have made that one look a lot better. They clearly want you to use this one. Yeah, I can see that perspective. There's, like, no promo material of that, I don't think. Yeah, that's This fair. is the one in all of it. That's fair. Yep, yeah, that's they, fair. They could have done a better job with that one. Okay. Um, I can already tell this is going to feel front heavy. Mm-hmm. What do you holding. think of the uh, the weight of the battery pack? That's fine. It's going to be in a pocket or something, right? Like, I'm not really worried about that, I think. Yep. What do you think of the fixed cable? It's not, it's only sort of fixed. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's one length, though. Oh, so you yeah. So can't just, you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to keep it in my shirt pocket today. Yeah, because it's a, it's, a, it's a different type of lightning, right? It's like... It's a, some kind lightning. of jumbo lightning. So it's, it's fixed cable. I mean, that's not great. For all intents and purposes today. Yeah. I would like to be able to have different lengths of cable. Sure. You got some grease on those lenses. Mm-hmm. Do I try it on now? Go for it. Do I keep the cover on? I have long eyelashes. I, it's actually a problem for me is my eyelashes just coat the inside <laughs> of any VR headset that I use with, like, grease. Oh, yeah. yeah you're going to want to loosen that a yeah, touch. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you going to take off the front cover? Sure. Also, I mean, any impressions on the... Uh, what? The yeah, okay. Yeah, he found it. <laughs> so that's how the pieces come apart. Uh, you're going to show the people, or you're just going to hold it under the desk? So yeah, I tried job. to take off the front cover by gripping this portion and pulling both sides, and then this came out, and I was very don't, temporarily... Don't forget about the other it. piece that comes off of that. Oh, wow. So that piece also comes off of the assembly that you just disconnected. All right. I don't need that though, right? No, nope. no. Nope. That's just this is the not thicker one. This is the thinner version Got it. of the okay. face face thing. Right. I'm gonna try again. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Here we now go. Here loose. we go. Here we go. That right there is hmm. a man who's going skiing. This is less comfortable than I expected, to be honest. Well, remember too, the face thing is not, you know, your size. Does it? Do these parts rest on your face? Um, it depends. So mm. if I use that band, it pulls in hard on my forehead. Yeah, me too. And if I use the other band, it hangs hard on my cheeks. Okay. It's I, like barely even touching my cheeks. All of it is right on my forehead. Remember to though, t take all of this it's not, it's for, not for what it is. Yeah. Luke didn't do a facial scan. This yeah. is not the correct size for him. Yeah, it's not However, um, I will say that one of my bits of feedback is going to be that I find the comfort of it extremely difficult to deal with. It's definitely a lot more front heavy than other VR devices I've used. Is it on yet? Uh, no. Okay. Hold the button on the left on the top. Top left. There should be a button. Hold it down. That's the right. <laughs> Good job. Okay, did it fire up? No. Uh, I hope I didn't let it die. <laughs> you found the button though, right? Uh, yeah, this one? Yeah, okay. It's not turning on? No. Okay, one moment, please. <laughs> you can just plug the battery pack into something, right? I think oh, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no problem. It's no problem. We've, uh, we've, we've got a solution. The solution Is the cable supposed to go up like this? Uh, yeah, that's where the cable goes. So it goes like, they're trying to get it around your ear? I guess. It doesn't actually go around my ear. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't have that problem, but that's interesting <laughs> feedback. Yeah, it like touches right at the top. The bigger issue for me, and a lot of this is, is just going to be stuff that I'm going to talk about in the review, 
Uh, all right, you should be able to turn it on now. It's it's charging now. Okay. Wow, uh, this whole everything on the forehead thing is not great. The bigger issue for me is that on both straps, the attachment mechanism here, I'm just going to go to Linus Cam here. The attachment mechanism is an ovular shape. You can see that? It's an oval. Um, and what that means is that there's absolutely zero play whatsoever. So if you're the kind of person who goes, oh yeah, you know, I really prefer to wear a, a back ponytail instead of a nape ponytail or a high ponytail, I would really like to adjust this to sit, you know, more this way or more this, no. No, you get to not do that. So if you look at the way that Luke's wearing it right now, Luke, can you turn to the side a little bit? If he was like, oh, I would really strongly prefer, you know, to have this kind of more up here, the answer is no. Apple says no. Speaking of Apple saying no, it won't turn on. Still? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely charging. Uh, here, can, can I borrow it for a sec? Maybe this is just user error. Or instructional error could also be that. Um, oh, man. Ah, so convenient. All right. You want to stall for me? Uh, sure. It's run interference. Uh, yeah, the whole forehead thing. I saw him take it off once, and I saw a very pronounced red mark along his forehead and then slightly along the sides. And I was a little bit surprised by that, and now I am no longer surprised at all. Uh, for me, again, it's not scanned for my face. So it's probably not already red on you. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, it's not scanned for my face at all. This is probably not useful information, like straight up. But no weight at all was distributed anywhere other than just my forehead. And all the weight for the device is in the front. So the entire weight of the device was just sitting right there. The, Where the other strap? I could. I could try that. The bigger issue for me is that my choices. So the reason you probably saw it so red on my forehead was because I had I was wearing it, it really it in. Yeah. I was wearing it really tight. And the reason for that is if I wear it at a reasonable tightness. Um, it just mashes the bridge of my nose. Mm. So this is actually the point where it's most uncomfortable. So you're cranking onto your forehead to save your nose. This is not turning on for me either. The light is red. It's usually green. So I guess it... Um, needs a minimum charge? Yeah, maybe it needs a minimum charge level, which I find have, a little bit surprising. Have you spent time with this? Should we swap straps? I have spent time with that. Um, like I was saying earlier, it basically takes the it takes the load off of here and puts right. it here and on yeah. my nose. That and it also just annoying. kind of feels like it's going to come flying forward on me because I would wear it farther back. I would wear it more like back here instead of like like here and here instead of right here and right here. Yeah, uh, it's like it's not deep enough. Yeah, this band seems. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised that's the one they put in all the promo footage. That seems kind of a little late, maybe. Um. Well, this is not working. This is <laughs> a little anticlimactic. Yeah, this was supposed to be our first topic of the week. I guess we're gonna have to pivot to another topic. This is yeah. Embarrassing. We can just come back to it. Sure, we'll come back to it. We'll let it charge for a bit. Yeah. All right. Good luck, buddy. Want to pick one? Try the other button. People are saying. No, I tried it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Okay. Da, 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 da. Apparently there is a Google doc of, uh, people reacting to you shaving and we're supposed to react to that. Really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know about this. Okay. Shave memes. There's a segment. If you scroll down, there's a section called segment. Okay. Reaction is to Linus's new face. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we'll just, uh, screen share for this. Okay. Uh, I'll go full screen. Sure. Uh, I think view that's... slideshow button. There, there we, we go. go. Okay, I saw this. That skipped way in. That's the seventh slide. What? Oh, well, okay. Well, are you happy? Yes. Right, initial reactions. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> it's not bad. No. Um, okay. Now well, that's felt. That's felt. What? I don't understand the opera one, considering he has a beard. Opera GX? It's not the beard. Uh, okay. I, I, uh, we're covering up the caption. Okay. Oh, da, 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 Mr. Be Mr. Besser's on it. He's on the case. <laughs> All right, we good? 
Yeah. Oh, wow, Dan. So you're just going to move it around on the fly? Okay. <laughs> yep. Glad to see you're back at NCIX. Love it. By the way, this uh, PC turned out amazing. Is it still having problems? Nope. Nice. No, nope, it's running perfect now. Nice. Uh, I think it ended up just being a motherboard issue or like PCIe riser, plug unplug. It's fine now. Yeah, it's 100% rock solid now. That's awesome. Runs cool. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Well, there's the my favorite one I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's valid. That's a good question. But you shaving brought the world together. Okay, I saw this yeah, what the on heck? the community post on YouTube. <laughs> And I thought, I just thought, I was like, oh, this must be a new meme format that's popping off right now. It's actually an extremely old meme format that is only partially related. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because I was going to send this to the social team. I was like, okay, yeah, we should probably find something to like piggyback on top of this. And then I forgot. And that's good because then I would have looked like it. Yeah. As a, as a citizen of basically anything we this is we amazing want the thing and then pass it on or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay very good that's Up actually pretty good Linus. that's actually pretty good <laughs> nice <sighs> oh no okay uh, I really don't think I'm going to go blonde again. Why? I, what? Do it. What? What? what Complete the look. Why are you, why are you being so aggressive right now? You, you dyeing your hair blonde and wearing oh, collared yeah. polo shirts Come on. would be. That'd be amazing. A wild throwback. No. We could get a really old camera and then do an LTT. Hold what on. is this? Clip. We can't oh. hear it. Is there sound on this? It looks uh, like there's sound. Here you go. They should be able to hear that. Give me one second. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. All okay. Right. Play yeah. again. Uh, Alex Wojolski says, my girlfriend says you look like a daddy with that beard, except I don't have a girlfriend, and I said that. Keep up all that you do. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> all right thank you again for, for i completely that. forgot about that but that's pretty funny wow <laughs> the future remains unclear i mean unless you have vision hey i doubt i'll be able to take anything he says seriously go oh, come on i'm still a serious Relax. person oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. This must have been the social team. Okay. That's pretty funny. Let's see if the Apple Vision Pro is working. There's an accelerometer in the battery bank and it's supposed really? to yeah, it's supposed to light up when you when you move it, but it's not doing it right now. <laughs> is this thing broken? It seems like a more expensive solution to the just like press the button to check method. Yeah. Also, I mean, did I mention this battery bank is just useless unless you happen to want to power a Vision Pro because <laughs> just Apple things? Isn't it also, like, not that big? Uh, I don't know. Um, Apple Vision Pro. It's uh, 3166 milliamp hours. Yeah, like, wait, what? Uh, it's it's over under provision. It's whatever the provisioning is, where there's more capacity in here than what they display by about twenty percent. I think it was even then. And I think the idea there is that they really don't want this thing to just be used every day, be charged multiple times a day, be kept at a full charge, and then have people have it just like dying in a year. No, they would like it to take at least a few years. Because that's how Apple rolls. By then, they'll have something better to sell you. It's not 5 volt. 12 volts. Yeah, it's a super random, random voltage. Um, like, the, it's something they absolutely could have done with PD. 13 volts. 13 volts. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure there's some reason that it runs at 13 volts. Yeah. Um, but I'm also sure that they could have found a way to make it not run at 13 volts and run it like a standard USB PD voltage as well. So is it working now or? I, I don't know. I'm checking. Okay. Um, keep running interference. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, it's working. Okay. Never okay, mind. Okay, here we go. 
right. R- run no interference. All right. Luke will be experiencing the Apple Vision Pro for the... Oh, yeah. Sorry. 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 Dragging the battery bank around is already annoying. Do you kind of get used to it? I feel like you would. I'm so over this thing. Oh. I can't wait until I'm finished my review and oh. I can just put it back in the box or like give it to horse to cover on Mac address or something. Wow. I, I'm, I'm over it. Oh, my I, goodness. Uh... uh. There are things that I love about it, and I and I mean that with a capital L, love. But there are things about it that uh, just make it the kind of thing that I love the idea of and I don't need to have on my face. Like, one thing to explain my problem, and again, I want to say it again, this one is not face scanned for me. To make it so that the face shield thing is actually touching my face, I can make that happen by pulling it completely off and getting a, like, I can see Linus right now through the device. Like oh, it, it- That's weird. Are it, you sure that's clicked on properly? It's magnetic. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. That's what I'm oh, I taking it off to make yeah. it touch my so, face. So the problem you have is the same one I have then. Like, okay, without the headband on, could you make the whole thing go against your face by changing the angle? Almost certainly. Yeah. But, Absolutely. But this be- right here is a, is actually a like a, oh wow. Yeah, I need to have the headband on, like, the upper crown of my head. That's really Okay, weird. so are you good now, then? Yeah, that's way better. Oh, okay, cool. It just has to be, like, way up here. I can't move it enough for it to be comfortable because it doesn't rotate. It's not It's not swivelable. I genuinely... This, this fixed pretty much everything. It's very uncomfortable on the back of my head. I don't like it being up mm-hmm. here. It feels like it's going to slip off. Yep. Um, but it's now resting on my face like way better. I have this the exact same problem with this one. It feels like it's going to come off at any moment. Yeah, I don't. But it's more comfortable than that band for me. Oh, yeah. This like this is immeasurably better. Okay. So uh, is it prompting you for a pin or anything? It or wants like... me to press this button to align. Okay. Something. Yeah, yeah. Hold it. Yep. Press and hold. Motorized. Motorized. Uh, IPD adjustment. Pretty cool. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. Whoa! What the heck is it actually right there? Hmm. How's that pass through? Wow, that's weird. Pretty good, huh? That is actually really good. Can you toss me something? Yeah, absolutely. Here, I'll uh, I'll toss you. Uh, ooh, I'll toss you a prototype LTT sock. Nice. Yeah, that was very like, easy. Yeah, yeah, no problem on the short circuit. Wow. Um, D brand bet me that I couldn't dodge all the things that Bell threw at me. So if I was able to dodge them all, they said they'd pay double for the sponsorship. Did you dodge them all? And if I wasn't able to dodge, I got nothing. Oh. So obviously I took that bet because I was extremely confident that I could dodge anything Bell could throw. I mean, if you played softball with him, he's actually pretty good. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But uh, yes, I successfully dodged everything. So I'm pretty sure D-Brand had to pay double. There's interesting stuff like right here. This visually is way closer to me than it actually is. It's that's that's kind of odd. But most things, once it gets far enough away, it's pretty good. The 3D mapping is, I would say, an extremely, extremely strong point. Yeah, it's it's very good. There's just like normally you're not going to have an object statically that close to your face. Yeah, so like it's it's fine. I can't read text on the laptop, but I can very easily read all the keys. Yep. Um, and, and if I you can had read a Mac text on the on the Stream Deck, perfectly fine. I mean, do you want it? Do you want it? To, oh shoot! Do I have? The, I have the pin thing up, and I. I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah. You can you can uh, enter it, uh, center it over there. So use the crown, which is on the right. Yeah, this one? yeah. Center it, looking at the wall, so that you're just like mashing off screen, and then just obfuscate what you're doing somehow. Is the pin over there now? Yeah. Yeah, it should be okay. So. Uh, oh, oh! Are, are you using just your gaze tracking and and um, yeah? Oh, yeah. So just just go like this in front of it. In front of uh, yeah, just in front of it, beneath it, just kind of anywhere. Yeah, you're, you're way off. You're way off screen now. And remember, they can't see what you're looking at anyway, so it doesn't matter. So your your fingers can be anywhere. They can be close. It doesn't matter if the people can see your fingers. Is that registering? He oh, stopped. Wow, us. that was weird to get used to. Apple Vision Pro, guys, all it costs is... Uh, okay, I'm in. He's in. He's in the Matrix. Uh, okay, maybe that centered... That looks fantastic. Maybe centered over here so we can see you. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, that's cool. And that looks insanely good. Right? That's wild. See any screen door effect? No. 
it's there's some i don't know if it's the 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 eyelash grease or because it's not fit my for my face there's a there's little imperfections here or there um but especially, oh, I'm like doing things and it's reacting to it. That's pretty funny. Oh, I got to stop. I want to look at stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got to just move my eyes. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Come on. There we go. Wow. This is very cool. I understand why people are reacting to this so heavily because this is actually quite novel. This is more novel than I expected. Yep. Having used pass through before and stuff like this before, this is much more novel than I expected. Do you have any of the photos, panoramic photos? Uh, if you just go to photos and videos, yeah, there, I'm sure there's some stuff in there. Like there's a, there's a, a 3D video that I recorded this of is, just walking around. This thing where they, they put the screen up looks incredibly good. I, I, I don't know if it's just because of the screen door or because of something else that they're doing, but it just looks fantastic. Yeah, the lenses are incredible. They're pancake lenses, so they're, they're super low profile but they have so much less internal reflection compared to the big screen beyond that I just cannot fathom how oh, they are this whoa. far ahead of what others are doing at this stage. That's pretty sweet. I can put it behind the wall. Yep. And then if you glance toward the bottom right or bottom left corner, then you can grab that and you can resize the window once you've positioned it where you like it. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, speak. He's, spatial com he's spatially computing, folks. I am, I am spatially computing. And like I've seen videos of people doing this, but it's actually way different when you're actually just doing it yourself. Interesting. You kind of have to trust it to work. For a while there, I was like trying to like scope it out. If you just look at the thing and do it, it seems to happen. If you try to finesse it, it doesn't happen as well. I don't know. That's a, not a great way of saying that. No, that's fine. I, that's fine. I get it. Heck Yeah. Rated out of 10 so far. First impressions. Ignore the comfort. Yeah. How, what is, what is my, what is my, what am, what, what is the thing that I'm rating? Display. Just it. Display, display is extremely the good. Interaction. Display has got to be, for everything that I've experienced, the display is a 10. It's pretty um, incredible, guys. The inter interaction is extremely good, especially considering I'm not holding something that's doing that. Um, I'm still having some problems with it like detecting where I'm looking. Now I didn't put it in guest mode for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I probably should have. Just... That's probably because of it not being scanned for my face. Yes. I didn't yeah. really care about setting up the IPD thing properly. Yeah. It's not in guest mode that I didn't even know existed, etc. It's probably those things more than anything because I've watched people use it and they haven't had these types of problems. So I'm not actually worried about that. Um, and when it does work, it feels like insanely good and I don't really see anyone having problems. So I think it's probably just a, a settings thing um so honestly the interactability that i've done so far is probably also like a, a 10 do you want to see dinosaurs yeah okay so just click the crown and go to the go to the this dinosaur one? experience yeah i think it's on the second home page um so just just pinch in front of you and swipe to the side to get no you got to pinch so a pinch is like a touch okay there you go yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then okay, encounter dinosaurs. Yep, this takes a little while, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a topic real quick while Luke sits here and um, experiences dinosaurs. I guess right now I'm just experiencing the room so with music. Good for him. Oh, it's over there. Can oh, you move it. I don't know. Can you? <laughs> no. Cool. So I'm just gonna stare at you. The whole time. <laughs> wow, which uh, <laughs> with my own eyes through the Vision Pro. <laughs> Definitely a little creepy. Is it weird? Yeah. Um, it's not very good, mm. so that's part of it. And then the other part is it's it's like you're kind of half face swapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is hilarious because the words in, on my side, the words encounter dinosaurs is just behind Linus's head. Yeah. But because it's behind your head, the top of your head is like translucent so I can still read the word. <laughs> yeah. So I have it set to um, recognize when other people are around and create a little translucent window in whatever it is you're doing, kind of like rubbing a, rubbing a French fry on a piece of paper, you know? Like, make it yeah. makes a little kind of kind of clear window where you can see other people. There's now a butterfly flying around your head. I feel like I'm in, like, you know that uh, depiction in old movies of someone who just got, like, a concussion, and you just, like, start seeing weird <laughs> things? Like, that feels like what's happening right now. All right, cool. Um, oh, wow, okay. 
Okay, are we? Am I even going to try and do a topic, or are you just going to? You can go for are it. Are you just going to do stuff? Okay, okay. We've got a quick jobs announcement. Uh, we're looking for a procurement coordinator. Uh, responsibilities include fostering positive relationships, streamlining procurement processes, uh, tracking product releases, and collaborating with the content creation team on trending tech. Uh, it's linusmediagroup.com slash jobs. Head over there if you, uh, that sounds like you or anyone you know. You can always uh, direct someone else there. You see the little dinosaur now? It's a yep. cute, cute little dinosaur. He's okay. squeaking. All right, you enjoy that little dinosaur, Luke? Oh, one thing I didn't even think about is, yeah... Audio quality seems okay. We're hiring some positions right now. There they are. See you later. <laughs> it lacks bass. The speakers are not amazing. Yeah. But what is amazing is turn your head around. The spatial mapping. Yeah. Is I'm, no I'm noticing that as the dinosaur is sniffing your head. Mind blowing. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I will also talk about how. Oh, we've added some new stuff on LTT Store. Do you want to talk about what you're experiencing at all, or should I just keep going? Uh,. No, I think you're good. Keep going. All right, cool. Uh, we are launching our black polo shirt. Yep, that's right. It's a black polo shirt. It's part of our 9 to 5 collection. Smart fabrics, easy fits, good looks. Uh, it's super soft and breathable with snaps rather than buttons on the collar. So convenient. Great for work or play. 96% cotton, 4% elastane. And we've got a couple of new graphic tees. That's right. We are finally launching some new graphic tees. Uh, Planetary's... In oh, this isn't planetary. Uh, Intergalactic was inspired by our digital journeys into other galaxies through AR and VR, uh, starting with the AR video that Lloyd did with MAC address. And then Planetary was inspired by putting tech internals like hard drives and Qi chargers out into the galaxy. So you can check these out at lttstore.com. Both were inspired by kind of bit slash pixel art styles. And uh, speaking of intergalactic and traveling into other galaxies, Luke, you're in the same galaxy, same planet. Intergalactic, but planetary. Very planetary far back in time. You know, a black polo is a perfect time for you to dye your hair. Thank you for that. That's um, really helpful. Yeah. This is crazy. I can understand why you're probably tired of it, but it's crazy. <laughs> it's very cool. I don't, this is, this is like, <clears throat> how long ago was that? I was at Oculus forever ago. I think 2016, 2017, around there. And I had a conversation with someone where I, I, I bet 10 years was the time frame it was going to be until we had like actual real mass adoption of VR. Right. Um, and this is pretty close. This is definitely, I think not it, but I think this is a huge amount of the way there. I think we need a better, better weight distribution, better strap situation. Maybe the screen quality is fantastic. The audio quality seems good enough. Um, the spatial audio stuff is wild. How you control it seems very smart. I don't know. It's good. This wouldn't be a normal place you would want to run your cable. Um, so yeah. I don't mind that I just hit it with my hand because I just wouldn't have it ran like this ever. So that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's funny that Apple was the one to divorce us from headphone cables. And now they've brought back a far thicker, I do far more obnoxious, far less sort of readjustable and manageable cable but that sure. part i find interesting the fact that there's no routing along the band or anything that you could optionally run it through um, we're gonna get third party headbands for this and they're gonna be infinitely better than the garbage that apple shipped point, it with because these are detachable so someone could yep. actually easily make their own that might solve a lot of my problems with it yep yeah um, almost certainly i think if it was scanned for my face and thus fit better i would be much more happy with it um, unfortunately, I don't think that I have my MacBook. Hmm. So I've been, I've been dailying a MacBook ever since I started my review of the Vision <laughs> Pro, which 
uh, admittedly has contributed to some of my impatience with it. There's definitely still things that I find very frustrating about Mac OS. Uh, to be clear, there's things I find very frustrating about Windows, things I find very frustrating about Linux. I, I, but there's, there's things I find very frustrating about Mac OS. Um, like, unless you go completely full screen on your app, how little of your actual screen you get to use between the menu at the top and then the dock at the bottom. <laughs> like, okay, sure, that's, that's great. I'm just, I'll just use this part of my screen while I'm browsing the internet. Um, I'm, not really a, I'm, not really a full screen, I'm not really a full screen app guy, but uh, let, me, let me go ahead and see if I can get this signed in, and then you'll be able to use the MacBook with the Vision Pro, and we can kind of get your impression of that. Have you done the IMAX thing? Sorry, IMAX? Yeah. Um, There's no. an IMAX app with a 46-minute long free video of a beautiful planet in collaboration with NASA. Uh, I just installed that. Oh. Yeah, I installed that last night. I was having trouble getting access to the App Store because I am Canadian. Yeah. Yes. So even if you get your hands on a Vision Pro, you will need to have a U.S. registered Apple ID. And then especially difficult, if you want to actually buy anything or subscribe to anything on the App Store, you will need a U.S.-based credit card, not a U.S. dollar oh, credit card. Oh, that's always so frustrating. It, the billing address must oh. be in the United States. So that was pretty frustrating when I figured that out. Uh, this is going to take me a minute because I need to log out of the account that I am in now, and then I need to log into a different account, and that's going to be that's going to be a second. Uh, so another addition that I would add to my obviously not enough time spent with it. Oh, I'm in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Oh, you can adjust the immersion uh, in your environment by turning the crown, which is the one on the right. Oh. Oh. Neat, huh? That is pretty neat. Uh, so, yeah, something that I will say is this is good enough that I would want one. I will really get one because it's $3,500. Oh, I see. Uh, and <laughs> I, I was, gonna, I was, I, whoa, yeah, you, you had me for a second there. I, I, I thought you I said I, want one, not we'll get one. Um, yeah, I thought you were legitimately like considering one all of a sudden there. No, but this is novel enough that like, this is very cool. This feels like a leap. Um, this is pretty sweet. Are you in the IMAX experience right now? Yes. If you're doing something and it's requesting you to close it, obviously you can close it. Nope. No, I am not doing anything. I'm trying to figure out how to sign out, and I finally figured it out. This feels like something that existed, and this is an app that you can, uh, you know, you can just play, like, this is, this is an IMAX whatever video thing, and you happen to be able to play it in this headset. If this video was... Wow, yeah, I wasn't expecting to see my hands. There they are. Uh, if this video was all... Around me in a more panoramic scene, I think it would be better. I'm looking at a big box, which is cool. So that's going to be the case for a lot of things. Uh, I have yeah, a couple which of makes sense. I have a couple of iPad apps that are compatible, like in compatibility mode. But I'm definitely understanding why developers don't necessarily want to didn't necessarily want to preemptively make things for a very questionable uh, user base. For a very yeah, for a very questionable experience. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I think with the... It seems like a lot of people are getting it. Reviews seem to be pretty positive. Maybe if a bunch of users actually get this. Um, and a, a version 2 comes out eventually and whatnot. That might be the time. I don't know. Unless you're into specifically into early adoption of tech stuff. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a thing for you, but if you are into early adoption of tech stuff, this is very cool. Sorry, this is this is going to take me a little while still. <laughs> uh, I, my my deepest and most sincere apologies. 
Dan, run interference. <laughs> yeah, merch message. Oh, oh um, yeah, yeah, hit us with a merch message. Actually, it's, it's pretty much the perfect time for that anyway. So, oh, excellent. Um, let's see. Hey, Dan and the others, what's the story behind Linus Cat Tips? Where did it come from, and what happened to it? Oh, it came from the idea that in the early days of the company, um, I was thinking, hey, with how long it takes to shoot LTT, which is just was unboxings at the time, uh, we could easily shoot the entire week's worth of content in a day. So nothing would prevent us then from having five different channels, each of which we shoot all the content for in a day. And one of the things that you know I'm, I'm pretty passionate about is cats. Um, oh, shoot. The, while you do whatever you're doing, um, the, the whole mixed reality portion of this is awesome. It like it knows that Linus is a thing that I might want to see right now. So like if I look to my left, I don't see this wall at all. I see an IMAX theater. I see all the different levels of it, etc. Even looking over there, there's like the door to the IMAX theater, the the front, oh whatever that, the water ball. I can't see that. Um, the like guardrail in the front. I see all that kind of stuff. I look over towards Linus, and I see exactly. Linus in the area around him. I look here. There's IMAX theater. This is You could sit at home and interact with the people around you fully and properly while also engaging in media, which is Pretty fantastic Oh my god, what is this? Um, whatever this is there's like Error messages are tiled over top of my whole screen Um <laughs> I'm so upset right now. <laughs> uh, sync failed. Okay, I I can't deal with that right now. I just need you to move. I just need you to move and get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try. Uh, let's try the other one. Send a new code. Come on, come on. Uh, this is not working. Maybe it's the other one. Oh, okay. I'm having a great time. Well, that's good. I'm really glad you are. I'm really stressed out. This is really engaging me. content, guys. Oh, no, I'm sure this is fantastic for you guys to watch. It's great for me. This is this is Luke's, a very Luke's cool watching device. a different show. I still wouldn't want to spend 3,500 bucks on it. Um, and I don't know how much how how required it is. It feels like being in the Apple ecosystem, it would be quite required. Um, I don't. I genuinely have no knowledge of how required it is to have a MacBook. But I don't have one of those either. So this would end up being a very, very expensive overall purchase, um, which I will not do because I am too cheap. But I am definitely starting to understand why people would. And some of the people that I know personally that have bought one, I, I get it. It's cool. It's very cool. Yeah, but I mean, so, you're, you're just kind of like looking at stuff like, I don't know. What's wrong it's with a what's wrong with a phone and and like a cardboard box? If you're just gonna watch like a movie, this is cooler than a phone and a cardboard box. Yeah, but that is like, how much money is that worth? Like that's how old? That's why I wouldn't. How buy it. how much how much content uh, oh, is going to be created? It's, it's like a this. novel yeah. uh, early adopter tech experience. You know, yeah. you're you're yeah. paying a massive tax. Uh, is the dollar value matching what you're getting? For a lot of people, probably not. But it is very cool. Um, and and the is, screen is good. I think that's what matters. The screen is fantastic. That is a huge part of it. I keep kind of slipping into like not even really realizing that this is what I'm doing because the video that I'm watching is fantastic. Um, mm. And like I look over at Linus and he's he's not there at all. Like it, it completely removes him. And then if I look directly at him, he's there. And it's very clear, good. I'm not. It's not fuzzy. I'm not seeing any screen door on. It's it's very very good. So I'm I'm like very very much immersed in this video that's in front of me. But I don't feel like I have like exited the room. If that makes sense, my ears are completely uncovered. Mm -hmm. So while I can hear the the thing, it's also very easy to hear you guys. I'm not wearing my headphones. Yeah, Normally you can still these, hear me. Yeah. 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 Normally these make it easier to hear you, especially. Um, but despite there being audio blasted directly at my ears by the headset, I can still hear you no problem. 
I so can still hear Linus, as no problem. Closed in as like a traditional headset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 That's nice. That part is really, really cool. Um, and pretty unique. I've dealt with pass through before. This is not the same thing. Not only because it's really fast. Like when Linus threw me that sock, it was second nature to catch it. It wasn't difficult. It wasn't, it didn't feel more difficult than normal. Um, but also just, it's, it's very smart. Like Linus walking away. It was like, mm -hmm. yeah, you might want to see this person walking in front of you. So Linus was rendered in, in front of the IMAX screen as he walked away. Um, but usually, like, the, the table is usually full deleted. This mic right now, because I'm in the IMAX view, is usually being full deleted. If I look right at it, it shows up. Um, but generally, it's not there. This is just, it's very cool. Whatever they developed to uh, intelligently detect what I would want to see mm -hmm. and decide when to show it and when not to show it is extremely good. That is like very impressively good. All right, I've got a merch message for you to uh, stall for time while Dan fixes something. Sure. Uh, Steven asks, uh, yo DLL, the hardest choice of my childhood was who to sacrifice at the end of Fable 2. What was the toughest video game choice that you ever made? Hmm. Mine's going to be stupid, so... I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you go first, just in case. I'm not even, I'm not even just, like, l losing myself in, uh, in the IMAX thing. I'm trying to think. Um, hmm. I can do mine first if you need time. Sure. For me, it was my first playthrough of Final Fantasy Tactics. I hadn't really understood by this stage in the game that like permadeath was a thing. Oh. And I I was a kid and I I played through a little bit more of the game thinking there's some there's got to be a shrine to get them back. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And I like get them back or something. So you know how wait, have you played Final Fantasy Tactics? Uh, n no, but I believe it works functionally in, in the permadeath sense, the same as XCOM, I believe. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, really where I was going with that was that each stage, each level of the game is extremely time consuming. Okay. You, you, you go and you like do things in between each stage, you visit different, you know, locations and you micromanage your stupid equipment and all of your abilities. And then you go and you do a fight and you might or might not win. And then you do the whole thing again and you try again. And it, it, like, it's very, whew, boy, is it ever time consuming. Yeah. So when you've made it a few more stages in, and you realize, oh no! And it they, it wasn't like a, it wasn't an important character because the important but characters still gone. when they. But it was it was not a random either, and I had gotten kind of attached, and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> they are dead forever. Um, so for me, it was less a decision of like who to sacrifice or who to not sacrifice and more a decision of, do I want to invest all of this time into restoring a really long time ago, like probably five plus hours of gameplay time ago save so that I can bring this person back to, I did it. <laughs> I went back and got them. I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. There's, there's a couple, like I, I can think in, I think it's mass effect two. I think there's a, there's a part of the game where you have to decide basically, I think one person has to stay back to like do something and the rest of the people can escape and you have to pick which person is going to stay back. Uh, and the person who stays back definitely dies and you're, you know, that's going to be the result decisions like that. Uh, I feel like, our, hello, Dan. You just showed up in the middle of the space station. Uh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the decisions like that I can find difficult, but I think the hardest one is going to be related to yours. I'm pretty sure it was Fallout 3. Uh, my, my dog died. Oh, no. And Fallout 3 was not as friendly with autosaves as uh -huh. some newer games are and I had been doing a lot of open world exploration 
and I had to lose like basically a day of gameplay. Um, but you did it, didn't you? And the decision ended up basically being like, I'm just going to quit for now because I don't think I can redo all of that this second, but I'm getting my dog back. So I'm going to just close the game and not save it so that I can like commit this decision and then I'm going to go move on and do something else for a while. And then eventually I did go back to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I obviously had to get my dog back. That was required. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to rumble? Another interesting thing just came up. Oh, all uh, right, fine. So you're just not going to do the thing that I've spent this entire... Well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm ready and I will do it, but I, I want to... This is part of it, actually. Spent half the show I got a notification saying that a device was added. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. And it brought me out of the immersive experience and was like, yo, you should probably deal with this really quick. And then the second I dealt with it, it was like, all right, we're back. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so here's a MacBook. Okay. It's probably been a while. Uh, yeah. Long time. Um, I don't know where to Okay. Be. So basically what How do I close the thing that I'm in? Uh oh, you can press the crown. I actually don't like how much I end up interacting with the crown. Okay, cool. Uh it's not a ton, but the gesture navigation is so fluid and so I feel like there should be like a do this and it closes whatever you're in or something. So much more natural that Maybe there is. really does there is. feel like and and you know what? I I've been experiencing it pretty raw so far. Right. Yeah. So in between me getting all of my own impressions and writing the review, I'm going to go Google a bunch of things. So I'm going to Google every complaint that I had and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to learn a bunch more and I'm going to go, Oh yeah, that's so much better. That would have helped so much. So I haven't done that yet, but figuring out how to get rid of a full screen experience is something that, um, I need to do or it needs to be better because so far the crown is the, the quickest, easiest way to get out of it that I've found. So on that Mac, you should see a little connect button that just floats above it. Yep. All right. So you just got to look at it and pinch. Whoa. I did it. You are now screen projecting. You can look down to the bottom edge and there's a bar. Just pinch. And you can move your screen projection Resizing. to wherever you want. Oh, no, not the bottom no, corner. I know, I know, I know. Bottom I just, edge. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There we go. I moved it. I want to move it. It's super here. cool. And unless it's more than one display, it's... Not good enough. Not good enough. Yep. This, is, this feels like another one of those, like, the V2 of this is going to be insane type of things. Where like, where, like, yeah, I literally immediately already want another screen. Just like, and, and, and I know some of this will be able to be solved with apps because as far as my understanding goes, you can have this connected laptop screen and also other apps. Yes. So like my, if I'm in this ecosystem, I guess Apple Music or whatever could be up on the side. Yeah, or you could have the Safari browser running on the Vision Pro. Interesting. If you just needed a web browser. Oh, that's pretty helpful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that completely solves the multiple monitor thing, but that helps it a lot. But your trackpad can go between those windows. That's pretty The big. projected Mac one oh. and the browser one. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's a whole thing. Wow. That's pretty good. If, if you can have Safari running on this, not taking up the screen, that honestly, that takes care of probably 90% of wanting a second monitor for me. Mm -hmm. Not 100%. I still want another screen, at least one. And there's a lot of little quality of life things that obviously need to improve and are going to be improved. Like if you stop, if, if you pull it off for one second and put it back on, no, no, don't, don't do it. It's okay. a big waste of time. Time to reauthenticate, which it can do with your eyes. You don't actually have to enter That's a pin once you've done that. good though. But sort of. Like if you're just like scratch, scratch and put it back. Time to reauthenticate and then time to reset up all your stupid windows. It can't, it no. can't authenticate through iris scan? No, no, it can. Okay. No, that's not the problem. The problem is whatever workspace you had set that's up. That's pretty annoying. Time yeah. to put it all back. Yeah. No, it, it would, they'll fix that. I'm sure they're going to fix that. It would be nice if there was like a, 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 a modes or scenarios thing or something. So you could be like, this is my like lounging at home scenario. Yep. So I want it to put my windows in these different places and stuff. Because needing to individually like boop, 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 boop all the time could be pretty annoying. Uh, but this is, the the screen on this is like, 
yeah, just insane. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you, and and I I did not find like if you try to watch a video, you can really see it struggle a little bit. Yeah. Like it's definitely wireless and if there was a wired mode that would probably be smoother uh in apple's infinite wisdom they have not implemented that functionality so you can get a developer strap mm. that i believe can use a wire but no i actually no. if i recall correctly no i don't think it can i think people are still kind of figuring out exactly what that thing is but it's usb 2 only hmm. it's like 300 dollars. it's either 200 or 300 dollars, and it's also it's required USB2. to reset your password <laughs> it's like it's a whole thing <laughs> Just like, it's just Apple things. Very cool. Um, anyway. This is sweet. Yeah. Very cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. The fact that it has a cable, though, and has absolutely no way to just plug in to a computer and transfer files off of it is f***ing deranged, though. Yeah. That one blows me away. I was trying... because I have more things you want me to do? Um, Should I jump out? No, I think I think that's pretty cool. I mean, you've had you, I think you've had a lot of the experience at this point. I um I I have a lot of video. Yeah, you look awful. I have a lot yeah, of video sure. and photos on this that I was that I need to get off in order to do the review. Like I've got a lot of screen recordings and stuff, and I was trying to figure out what's a fast way that I can do that. Because you know, oh yeah, is there a is there a this to USB C or something, or is there like a you know if I pull this off, is there is there a USB C port? So no, no, it doesn't. It's a computer with an M2 chip, which tells you that it definitely has a USB three controller for four. <laughs> that doesn't have a port because Apple figured, well, no, you'll just do everything wirelessly. Um, what if I don't want to? What if I don't want to use AirDrop? Yeah. Well, then I guess you better buy more Apple products. Yeah, it's it's gotta, typical. You got to be in the Apple It's typical ecosystem. Apple. I talked about this in the short circuit, but you obviously haven't watched it um, because you told me you haven't watched it. That's yeah. why it's obvious. Yeah. Um, I, I talked about this in the short circuit, but probably the most Apple. I love a lot of the things that they do. They obviously innovate. But they are so blatantly, brazenly hostile towards their own users that I just, I don't really understand why they put up with it. And the point that I made was this. Look at what Apple includes on the front. Like, feel it. It's a nice cover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's... It's a pretty nice cover, isn't it? Yeah. So at $34.99 sure. or $36.99 or $38.99, that's included. That's great because it means that... Oh, God, yeah, 3500 bucks. That's a USD, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a $5,000 Canadian device. <laughs> okay, but like, that's great, right? Because it means if you, you know, this is not, this is not something that fits in your pocket. Right? This is something you would have to actively carry around with, with intent, with purpose to use. And given that the battery life is in the couple of hours to, I think, up to, up to three or four hours range, um, I haven't sat in it long enough to run out of battery. So I, I was going to rely on just like doing a benchmark or something to kind of figure that out. Um, but, it's, but it's in that, that fuse one hand of hours range if you are going any, anywhere with it for any meaningful amount of time you will also be carrying a charger but it's great that it includes this because you would hate for this to get scuffed yeah <laughs> guess what's not included some type of protection for the lenses apple doesn't do anything by accident why luke why did they include this cover but not this cover because if the front of the device got super scratched up and everything that's what other people other potential buyers are going to see and that will bother other people more well what that's are you going to do what are you going to do about the inside inside lenses the new ones i guess well apple sells a travel case uh, that one will protect uh, the inside lenses. Got it. That makes sense. So for everyone else, Ugh. we need to make sure the product looks its best. Yeah. And we will take care of that. We will make sure of that. For you, the person who actually f***ing bought it, 
<laughs> you just scared Dan. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I'm not mad at you. Uh, for you, the person who actually bought it, go f yourself. Buy more. Heck it is. Yeah. It is something that I don't understand. How anyone cannot see. It's so transparent in their product design, in their decisions, in the way that oh, yeah, they. For sure. And how do you tolerate it? How do you accept it? Um, well, I don't have my AirPods on me. That's actually very unusual. I um. um there's, anyway, there's a couple of full comments. AirPods, oh. though. Yeah. The AirPods Pros. Think about how they look in your ears. What color are they? White. Yeah. How how describe the white? Uh, pearly white. It's perfect. Sure. It's pristine. Yeah. What do they look like when you open it up to use them? I don't have pros. Okay. Well, they have like the cheapo They ones. have white silicone things that go into your ear canal. So tell me what color you think they are. Yeah, those are going to get discolored real quick. Yellowy. Right. Yeah. So yeah, every brownie. time you, the user, go to look at the product that you paid 250 US dollars for, <laughs> it looks disgusting. Put it in the ear, it looks great again. The only reason, as far as I can tell, that black AirPods don't exist is because f you, the user who paid for them. The white. I'm white sorry, but I actually. Thing in your ear looks very iconic. Like I cannot, because Apple has absolutely done products in other colors. They have the whole, that whole red thing that they've done. Your phones have come in various colors for a long time. Sure, of course. Of course. Apple has done black Macs before. Yeah. Um, they, 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 they absolutely are willing to make things in other colors. I think the white looks good. The white looks great. Yeah. For three days. What if they had uh, like the like black or any other color of the silicon tip thing? What if they did? They don't. Would that make you happy though? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I would settle for that. Yeah. Cool. Yep. But it's one of those things that users have complained about for years. And, you know, like the the charger on the bottom of the mouse, and they just don't care. <laughs> um, or repositioning icons on the home screen. The fact that they just so so brazenly, just so transparently give zero fucks whatsoever. It's just. It's just. It's bizarre. And the fact that they they do not immediately get called out on this by absolutely everyone is baffling. Does you the guys Quest shipped, have a protector thing? The Quest doesn't cost 3500 fucking dollars. That's fair. And the Quest, again, Luke, doesn't come with the cover for the part that Apple cares about. <laughs> it's not about <sighs> you, the person who actually paid for it. It's about Apple's priorities. I don't know, man. I'm not... I've decided at this point, I've talked about it on my show, I've talked about it in the short circuit. I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on that in the review, but it's just one of those things. People ask, why do you hate Apple? I don't hate Apple. Yeah. I like lots of their products. What I hate is their attitude. I hate how they just, they are so openly hostile towards their users. They are, they are the, they're... <laughs> And, and the, and is they, this one of those situations, yeah. though, where it's like the, the open hostility that you don't like? Because I think there's a lot of stuff that other companies are doing in less communicative ways. Well, it's also the, it's also the hypocrisy. Just as or more evil. It's also the hypocrisy. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. There's lots of companies that are far more evil than Apple. Let's talk Nestle, right? Like, <laughs> it, you don't have to I, go I meant far. I competing companies. Like, what, which, yeah. which one's the one that... Um, that basically was like, yeah, we, yeah, people were murdered. It was basically by us, but it wasn't in the United States. It's outside of the jurisdiction. Like that was their wasn't defense. That, uh, they never even claimed that, I thought that they was didn't like have people killed. Or something. Well, let's um, not get this one wrong. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, <laughs> I want to say it was some kind of um, beverage company. I thought it was a beverage company. Uh, it looks like it was. Uh, it looks like it was. Um, it looks like it was Coca Cola. Uh, I found an article from the Guardian. Yeah, and they 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 uh, try to push like that. That isn't an admittance that 
we actually did this. That was just a way to get it thrown out of court. But it's like, yeah. Yeah, right. But like if you didn't yeah. do it, maybe that would have been the better defense. You know. It might have been worth it just from a PR standpoint <laughs> if you didn't do it to fight that case. Yeah. <laughs> that you didn't do it. So, sure. I'm not yeah. going to say that Apple's the evilest company. Um, but what I will say is that Apple is the company that doesn't respect us enough to tell a believable lie. And I just don't understand why we tolerate that. Mm. Just tell me that you're not going to ship a charger in the box because you don't fucking want to. Just uh, tell me that you want the box to be smaller because the logistics cost at the volume that you're doing, the number of iPhones that you're shipping every year, just tell me that it's a huge savings. Don't yeah. tell me you're saving the earth. You're not saving the earth. You make decisions actively on every product cycle to destroy the earth faster. You go out of your way to make it so that your products are less repairable, so that they don't last as long as cost effectively. So then just don't say you do that. That's the other thing that just drives me absolutely up the wall. So how openly hostile they are, yeah. how hard their users ride them in spite of that, and how just how how not believable at all the lie that they tell me is at least have a good story pretend give me something we could all kind of get on board yeah. with and go okay yeah sure maybe even if i don't believe it 100 percent, at least there's some grains of truth here just say we <laughs> didn't want to spend you know 13 dollars on a power brick for every iphone just say and, that and you can even you can even win that like the i want yeah. the box to be smaller thing yeah. you can even win that with the logistics side because mm -hmm. you're like we're trying to spend you know less fuel moving yeah or stuff. i mean this is a good one so with the with the charger one okay just just play play along a little bit if they had said okay we're not including a charger this generation and drop the price by 20 bucks and then the next generation just like put it back in you know, at least at least give us some time to forget or something. But they didn't. They they took out the charger and they increased the price anyway. Like it did. There there was never a benefit. Yeah. Um. There there's two comments in Philippine that I want to talk about before I forget sure. them. Um, Zero transform. This is more something for you. He said, make sure to check out the Apple TV Plus immersive videos. It's mind blowing how well they did 3D 180. No weird distortions and the scale is flawless. Sure. So maybe no, check, I will check that, that out. out. And then Handyman uh, has said about 47 times, um, you should try Quest 3 at $500. It offers much more, albeit not that great display, but at $500, it does a lot more than the Vision Pro. It does a lot more depending on what you're trying to do. Yeah. If you want to play fitness games, yeah. you buy one of these. What are you, an idiot? Yeah. That's not what it's for. Whereas if you buy a Quest 3 and what you want is to watch immersive video in extremely high quality and be more productive with your Mac. Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's, it's horses that, for courses. That feels like, uh, from my experience so far, the correct take. Um, uh, what was that thing that yeah, uh, I'm supposed saying to try? No, nobody's wearing a Quest 3 in public. Oh, the thing, uh, Apple TV oh, plus Apple immersive TV. video or something. It, I, I, I scrolled away from the yep, comments. I've got that on my list of experiences. That I've, I've also got, like, someone apparently got um, Steam Link working. And uh, so, like, there's a handful of things that are still on my list of stuff that I need to try. But I'm, I'm definitely done with it. I'm especially done interacting with other people with this thing on. Like, yeah, the pass through is great and you've got the, the eyes and, you know, whatever. But, it, you know, Apple has stated that their vision for this product was that it wouldn't isolate you. And that's just, uh, that's a complete swing and a miss. It is utterly isolating. Um, conducting an in person meeting with somebody is just not cool with this thing. You can, you absolutely can. But it serves no purpose for the interaction with other people, for one yeah, thing. I, I feel like that's like almost like you're, you're taking it too far. Like, they, are they suggesting conducting an in-person meeting? They can't do anything that I'm doing. They can't see anything that I'm seeing. And it has no benefit for me because I, unless I have some kind of supplemental material that for whatever reason nobody else needs to see, 
Like, I, I, I might as well just look at what everyone else is looking at. I, I want to address this really quick. Yeah. Uh, H- Handyman is, I think, very upset about someone liking the Vision Pro. I, I might be projecting. I'm not sure. But he said productivity is not good, though. Uh, I, I don't think you can say that um, because if someone's like, I'm going to measure my productivity uh, at my desk using my laptop versus at my desk using my laptop with my vision pro like, yeah, no, who cares? Uh, the, the thing that people are talking about is when you're, if, you, if you're out and about, if you're on a train, if you're on a plane, if you're in an automobile um, and you're able to, you're able to make the screen bigger and then still use your, your keyboard and trackpad. I can absolutely see this being a benefit for people in scenarios. There's like no way that it isn't. That would actually be mind-blowingly ridiculous in my opinion if it wasn't in some scenarios. But is it a productivity boon when you're sitting at your desk? Yeah, probably not. And it all depends on what your desk setup looks like. Sure. At my desk, I have a gigantic monitor already. And you know what? So back to my point where I'm like, uh, I, I've conducted a couple of script reviews using the Vision Pro, which you remember how script review works. We pull yeah. up the script. Um, I drive, but we have a lot of conversations about, you know, how can we tweak this to make this the best script that we possibly can? Well... Did you notice that your MacBook goes black? Yeah. When you This is what project? I'm saying, though, where like it, it feels like an inappropriate scenario. Like, I just wouldn't use it then. You can't duplicate it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You actually can't. I, I, we, we've talked about this before. You, you should, it should absolutely default, and I think it should default every time. Yes. Uh, to screen completely blanked out. I don't even yes. think there should be a setting to change the default. But... You should be able to override it in the moment and be like, no, I want to have both of them showing. So you know how we did script review? <laughs> I had my computer in front of me and I was using my keyboard and trackpad. the dock open on another... And then I had a Teams call <laughs> and I was sharing the window with someone sitting next to me on their laptop. So we were essentially oh, conducting a virtual meeting in person. Yeah, you can carry a battery bank of some kind or you can just plug it into your laptop. Yeah. I, I feel like people are, are making up shortcomings because it's really expensive but you have to understand that it being really expensive is enough of a shortcoming and you have to understand that it being really expensive is a feature for certain people also that yeah it is an attention getter far more than probably any piece of technology that i have touched in the last 10 years like the folding phone that was that's a conversation starter Huge conversation starter. The second you walk up and unfold your phone and start doing something, people are like, well, less now, but especially in the first couple of years. It was just something that people hadn't seen. Um, And I think it was also aided by the fact that it wasn't Apple. So nobody had even seen Samsung's marketing for it. They just had no idea this was a thing that existed. Um, This immediate attention getter. You go anywhere, you do anything with it. People are going to hate it. People are going to love it. People are going to have feelings about it. A hundred percent. And for a lot of people, the fact that it's exclusive, the fact that it's expensive, that's a good thing. Yeah, a lot lot of people like that. That makes them stand out even more. Look at luxury goods. It's what Apple's been trying to be luxury luxury goods this whole time, right? So like, just look at the luxury goods space. The entire thing about it is exclusivity. Yeah. I have it, you don't. It's not about. I am cool. It's not about how many the company will sell. It's about how few of them people can afford to buy. And then like Apple's, you know, because they're actually a technology company, a consumer electronics company, not a luxury goods company, they, they always get kind of torn, right? Because they, they, they create these, these things, but then they are subject to the same pressures as the rest of the consumer electronics industry. So the pricing does have to make its way into, you know, somewhat affordable consumer land at some point, but this one's not there. This is very much a statement piece. I mean, it's the first new category they've actually introduced under Tim Cook's leadership, I think. Like, has he started any AirPods? I'd mm. say AirPods are a Tim Cook era smash hit. Um, the watch mm. is doing okay. The watch is doing pretty solid. It feels like it's doing better than the other watches. But I don't think either of those are as big. No. As big of a swing as this. I mean, no, this said, is a big deal. He said, what, there's 5,000 patents to bring this thing over the line or something like that. And this is, this is something I've ended up getting into it with a couple people in the comments already, is people saying it's overpriced not overpriced do you have any idea how much this thing costs to develop what does overpriced yeah, mean this, I- this is this is the same this is the exact same problem with the whole streaming debate that we've had uh, over the last little bit where streaming it's like, debate yeah because everyone's like uh, streaming like you should pay creators more and and companies should be super flush with money and it's like no they're all broke 
Um, like Twitch doesn't make any money. Uh, oh, what, what I was, see. What was what was even the one Microsoft had? I don't even remember anymore. A mixer. Mixer. Mixer like died hard because they were like, yeah, we brought in a bunch of big streamers. People still didn't care, and it just cost us a bunch of money. Let's get rid of it. Um, and Meta just like has been deleting like billions have they not yeah trying to work on vr they're not making money <laughs> they're not making money at all uh yeah i don't know it doesn't mean that it has to be like oh that knowing that automatically makes it worth it for you no that doesn't mean that at all but it does mean that like yeah it might make sense that it's actually pretty expensive yeah i mean it's it's not bomb over- cost is not everything you have to include R and D. R and D costs money. Yeah. Support costs money. Yeah. Marketing costs money. Paying developers to adopt their apps to this thing, which might be something that happens. I don't know. Maybe with some really major developers. Not with us. And believe but. it or not, you have to pay for the marketing that makes it yeah. so more other people will buy it so that they can amortize the development costs over more units because at the end of the day, the cost is all of the costs it's it's all it's all of them it can't just you can't just look at bomb costs it's not that simple it's, yeah. and it never will be yeah but guess what there's good news if you don't like the price you can just not buy one yes absolutely and th- this is another thing that i was just going to get into and i've talked about this a lot on wan show and i'm going to bring it up again uh but you should criticize things for the right reasons and not for the wrong reasons because when you criticize things for the wrong reasons, it makes that thing look better, not worse. It's actually super important. People screw this up all the time. It's very easy to uh, go after things that don't matter. And then when you go after things that don't matter, the people that are trying to defend it uh, will ham on that. And then you, you, you're not winning the game, basically. Look. So crit- criticize legitimate things about it and don't just try to make stuff up. I know math is hard when you're an idiot, but look, <laughs> if you're a broke boy, just say so. It's, it's the Pokemon. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. Wow. You're not a broke boy if you can't afford a Vision Pro. Uh, most people shouldn't just be able to, like, magically afford a Vision Pro. $3,500 is a lot of money, especially American. <laughs> five grand. That's roughly five grand, right? Chat gets Canadian? it, which is, which is nice. I, it probably also helps that this is not my product, and I'm not defending it. I'm telling you guys, I can't yeah. wait to stop using it. Yeah, so this is $4,720 Canadian. Yeah. I know, like, close to no one that just has that. And, like, what oh, did, I could just go randomly spend What did it. you enter in the, in the calculator? 3,500 USD to CAD. Oh, well, I mean, don't you want any storage on it? Oh, my goodness. That's the 128 gig. What? Really? It comes with, at 3,500 US dollars. Yeah, look at this face. At 3,500 <laughs> US dollars, it comes with 128 no gigabytes. Do, do you know how much storage? No I, I bought it. I bought a one. Wait, wait, I bought wait, 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 wait. Hold how, on. People are saying 256. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I Paris, bought a two terabyte wait, 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 M.2 wait, wait, wait. drive like on Tuesday or I Monday I think, for $100. I think lying. It's 256. It's 256. I'm sorry. That's still ridiculous. That's still ridiculous. But that's a lot better. I was stunned yeah. that 128 could even like exist. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 256 is still bad. That is 256 gigs. Do you want to know how much? Another 256 gigabytes of storage will cost you. Did they bump you to like four grand? No, not quite. Okay. It will cost you $200. Yeah. And another another 512 will cost you another $200. So that's how you get to your 4K. I was like, there's got to be a $4,000 device. There's a $4,000 device. (laughs) Ah, the old Apple ladder. Yep. So we have a video coming soon (sighs) where we built a PC Pro because everyone knows the, the current Mac Pro is a meme. It's a Mac Studio in a giant chassis for thousands of dollars more. Like, it's absolutely, completely ridiculous. So we did a video building a PC Pro to compete with it, where we take the same budget and we just absolutely wreck it. Like, it's it's not even funny. Uh, Last time we did a PC Pro, it was tough. The Mac Pro came out ahead in some cases because it was a really powerful machine and like Apple has some good, you know, blah, 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 right? This time around, the thing's a joke. Like you can build such an overpowered monster that it just has absolutely no chance whatsoever. And one of the problems is that the storage costs 
so much. Elijah and I did the math. Guess what costs more per, per unit weight? Apple storage, Apple NAND chips, or gold? <laughs> it isn't close. <laughs> is gold the cheapest one? Gold is cheaper. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a that's a yikes. Uh, so yeah. wait, sorry. So how how much is the lens protector, the so, travel case thing? So we grab a chunk of the gold controller that I didn't end up using because I needed an opening for wireless communication, and we like weigh it next to an SSD that's like the same capacity, and it's it's in the video. I think we uh, we played around with it a little bit, like we uh, two hundred USD, um, like the carrot of the gold that we were using what didn't match something so we like we put a couple of weights under the ssd to make our point but then we we, we adjust we we account for it basically uh, but they are they're they're similar or i shouldn't have said it wasn't close they're similar or uh or the gold is cheaper um what was i what was i gonna say there was another thing real quick here uh, and yeah the gold the gold's a better investment um shoot i was about to say something Ah, I missed it. Sorry, no, you were going to say something. Yeah, I'm trying to total together, like, if, if you wanted to trick yours out, because, I mean, you're, you know, you're spending 3,500 USD on oh, it yeah. anyways. Oh, that's right. It's a couple so, hundred bucks. So, yeah, someone, someone I, I haven't found this to corroborate, but somebody said, uh, it, so it's, it's 3899 to get the one terabyte version. Yep, $3,900, baby. Compared to $3,499. Uh, and then you throw on $499 US dollar Apple Care. Yeah. So, I mean, you just spent four grand on a device. You might as well protect it. Oh, there's a deductible, by the way, for accidental damage on this one. Apple Care is not <sighs> Apple Care on this one. <gasps> and, yeah. then, and then you want to get your travel case because the best use case scenario, as we've been saying, isn't just sitting at your desk, it's yep. when you're out and about. So you also need the travel case, which is what, 250 bucks USD? Yep. Don't forget that if you have any, need any kind of corrective lenses, you'll need to pay extra for the corrective lens insert. So you could get to 4,000 okay. just for the headset itself okay, if you so go one terabyte with corrective lenses. Let's say you've got some corrective lenses and you go for one terabyte and it's four grand. Uh, then it's $4,750 to honestly like properly set up your one terabyte with corrective lenses vision pro because the travel case maybe there's going to be third party ones almost certainly there's going to be third party ones that you can get uh but you like should i don't know yeah maybe if apple care isn't as good as it normally is maybe do you should all get apple oh does apple care all have deductibles Ooh. has that always been the case i don't think so i didn't think it used to when did that's hilarious i've never got apple care because i haven't bought any expensive apple devices um but people that are into apple stuff all tell me that it's really good has that always been a thing oh for accidental damage there's always been a deductible okay all right that's good to know yeah i've personally accidental damage that makes sense i've yeah. personally never bought apple care before okay. but it's uh but it's cheaper so only for accidental damage or loss. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. Thank you very much, guys. I also want a, a laptop to go with mine. I don't have a MacBook. Oh, yeah. Okay. But that's a, that's a dangerous argument. And that's one that I actually, I strongly object to. I mean, we talked about this... <laughs> Dan optimistically just trying to move the show along with his little signs. We haven't even done merch no, messages Daniel. yet, Dan. Take that away. Take that. We'll do sponsors later. We did. We did. No, no, we didn't. We didn't explain them and stuff. Um, so yeah, we, that, I was just stalling for time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> to bring up a, a previous controversy, when I talked about the PS portal, I had people saying, "Well, the price is so much because to even use it, you need a PlayStation." I don't think Sony ever positioned the PS Portal as a device for people who don't already own a PlayStation. And in much the same way, I don't think Apple is positioning this device as something for people who don't already have a Mac. I don't think they are explicitly saying, unless you have a Mac, you might as well not buy it. But the fact that they have a facial scan that requires you to have a relatively recent iPhone in order to even go through the checkout... 
I think they've made their point clearly enough. If you don't have a Mac and you want to jump into this ecosystem, you need corrective lenses, you want the one terabyte version, you're going to get the travel case, and okay. you're going to get Apple Care. Okay. If, you, if, if all of these things line up, uh, you're, you're a cool 7,250 US dollars in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> that's one heck of a trip to the Apple store. And that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, 100%. I guarantee it. 100%. I mean, on a payment plan, but make sure you get your Apple credit card. Yeah. I, they, I saw the numbers recently. The the number of transactions card. going through on Apple's credit card are, whoo-wee, they're apparently doing okay. I think uh, whatever bank they collaborated with wanted out of it or something. I, I've been sort of only <laughs> barely peripherally following it, but interesting. people have Apple credit cards, apparently. So that's a thing. <laughs> Oh, did they dissolve the credit card? Okay, there you go. Apparently it's dead. Um, cool. What? Goldman Sachs wants out. Goldman. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, okay. So I, I think they still have Apple Pay, though. No, they definitely still have Apple Pay. Uh, someone says, no, it's not dead. I still no, have one. No, yeah, it's yeah, not dead. There, on the Vision Pro, there's a thing, Finance, Apple Card Monthly Payments. Yeah, Goldman wants out, though. Uh, I guess it, I guess whatever deal Apple negotiated with them is not doing it well for them, and I think Goldman also wants to go back to being more uh, like investment bank and, and less like consumer business or something like that. I don't know. It was a while back. Got it. Um, they're leaving retail banking entirely. They just want to deal with rich people. Yeah, fair enough. All right. I think this is the point in the show where we're supposed to explain merch messages and do a couple. The way to interact with the show is not to buy a Vision Pro. We actually get none of that. That goes all straight to Apple. Um, if you get one, though, you should watch the show using it. Yeah, yeah. And then apparently you're a baller, so you should probably buy some merch. Yeah. So the way to interact with the show is through a merch message. All you got to do is go to lttstore.com, check out our new black 9 to 5 polo or a couple of our new graphic tees, a screwdriver, a backpack, whatever it is you're into. Hey, did I mention... The LTT backpack has lots of space in the compartment of holding for your Apple Vision Pro, as well as your MacBook and your iPad and all that. So it's actually like, unironically, kind of awesome for carrying around the Vision Pro and all the accessories that you need for it. It's got pockets for everything. We were way ahead of the curve on this one. Oh, this is even better. Check this out, Luke. Um, here we go. So with the with the Vision Pro, our... Cargo pants, our upcoming cargo pants, <laughs> so have a perfect pocket for the battery bank. Ah, uh, ah. Uh? That's pretty sick. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Right, merch messages. In the cart, you will see a little box. Yes, cart, right? Check out. Crap, I don't know, somewhere. You just go through the checkout in the cart. You'll see a little box when we're live. You can leave a merch message. It'll go to our producer, Dan. There he is. He will either reply to it, forward to it, forward it to someone who can help you, or he will curate it for me and Luke to talk about on the show. Dan, do you want to show them how it works? A couple curated ones? Yeah, I got lots here. Let's do it. Yo, DLL, the hardest choice of my childhood was who to sacrifice at oh, the end of... we did this one. We did? Oh, I must have been out of the room. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta archive them. What else? Sorry, I forgot. I was really busy trying Didn't to Dan troubleshoot say it? something. No, I did. Oh. Yep, we're good. All right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is not how it normally works. Uh, yo, DLL, I work for an MSP doing Tier 1 and voice over IP. I love coding and automation as a hobby, but when I try to make some work-related, the higher-ups seem to uh, kind of prefer the hard or long way around. Any suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, man, I'm going to sound so jaded and cynical right now, but, like, dude, yeah, man, I... One of the conversations that drove me out of NCIX was when I popped into the president and CEO's office, who was not Taryn, it was a different, different person. I had three bosses there, and what I've realized over the years is that in the interest of keeping them semi-anonymous, I've always just said my boss at NCIX whenever I talk about any of them. So I'll tell a story, or someone will encounter an old story that I told about my boss at NCIX and like a super stupid thing they did, and they'll be like, why'd you hire him then? Okay, there were, there were multiple different people. So this particular boss um, did a lot of things right. I uh, did a lot of things like I'm about to tell you. Um, I think my way of describing this to people at the time uh, when I was talking about how frustrated I was, was um, it felt like arguing with someone who was using moon logic. Um, because we had an issue. Some new graphics card had launched. 
Uh, I want to say it was 5770 or something like that. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Some AMD graphics card launched. And 5570, five no, I, I don't remember, it doesn't matter. The point is, um, that part number, okay, that or that string of digits happened to have an issue where it was extremely common in UPC codes for PCs and electronics. Um, in particular, some graphics cards, especially XFX. So when you searched for it, you would get one or two real results that happened to be XFX Radeon cards that happened to also that happened to be in the UPC code as well as in the model number and part number, and then you'd get some other random graphics cards and then a bunch of other random stuff because the way that our search engine worked on NCIX.com. It would not prioritize. <laughs> mm, it would not prioritize product description. This was so annoying. Or part number over UPC. This for, was so annoying for a partial match. Yeah, because it was only a partial match of the UPC, but it was a full match of the description and also a partial match, but a more complete partial match of the part number, right? So I popped my head into the office and I was like, "Hey, we need to seriously." I, like, if you want to return a search result for a UPC, like, by all means, someone might have a barcode scanner at a, Full at result, a replenishment though. station or something, and they scan a UPC, and like, they might expect obviously. a result. Um, no problem, but we need to stop returning results for partial UPCs. And he, like, grabs something on his desk, and he goes, well, what if I would want to buy one of these? And I looked at this, and I typed part of it, and I pressed enter. And I'm like, why the f*** would anyone do that? No one on the planet. I, I, I bet you that happened less than five times. That one person, probably just to, to prove a point, did it at least once or twice, and no one else ever did it again. And he basically goes, and I'm like, right, but no one does that. And he's like, well, how do you know? And I go, because that doesn't make any sense. Because I'm a human. Nobody would ever do that. Yeah. You're, you're partial, you know, product name, sure. Partial, partial part number i mean god maybe maybe you would want to return a, a result for every evga gpu that has a lifetime warranty so you would do a search for asterisk dash a r you know which which was the suffix like i could come up with some conceivable reason someone might do that with a part number maybe with a up fucking c are yeah, you no. kidding me yeah. absolutely not they're unique identifiers for every product yeah and I was basically sent out of the office and told, go put together a presentation, go do research on how everyone else's search engines work and whether they do or do not return results. Of so course they don't because it's stupid. And I have to put together like a presentation for this. I'm like, this is an utter waste of my time. Why do I, why exactly do I work here? That was, that was one of the, the big pivotal moments. That and the other story that I tell all the time were like the two huge ones that I kind of went, how do I, how do I do this anymore? I, I can't be putting together a common sense presentation for people who are supposed to be smarter than me. <laughs> so I guess yeah, what I'm trying to good. say is it never ends because when you start your own company and you have a whole bunch of people working for you, if you know anything about leadership and empowerment, you are going to empower people to do things and they're going to do it moon way anyway in spite of the fact that supposedly they work for you or whatever, and you're going to have to explain it and reach a consensus because if you just come in and be a dictator, then, well, you're just a dick. Um, so it never ends. And you probably don't have any taters either. No, I, I got lots of taters. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've got the potato PC coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So I'm so sorry. It never ends. <laughs> I for, until you said that i forgot this was even a merch message <laughs> yeah hello l cool l and d as a cybersecurity professional i have seen people disregard security too much what has been the worst you've seen so far also remember to audit sharing links in teams well i think uh i think when we uh you know had justine and wendell on the the perpetual wan show doc 
that's the worst thing ever. That's that's such well, a security the worst thing hole. we've seen today. What if you guys if, missed the pre-show? <laughs> you're you're telling a story that most people don't have context for. So we we figured out that I Justine and Level One Tex Wendell Justine from I Justine and Wendell from Level One Tex um, are shared on the Perpetual Wan Show doc. Uh, and some people were like, "Oh my God, you have to fix that. It's a security hole." And I'm like. It doesn't matter if they change something. And then someone brought up a much more decent point, which was like, what if their account gets compromised and then someone could access this? And I'm like, yeah, it still doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just it's just a WAN show doc. We can restore it to its previous state instantaneously. And they're going to secretly find some tech news. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It should um, be fine. Most egregious thing. I don't know. People take pictures of their keys and post it on social media all the time. Even techie people, it's crazy. Okay, devil's advocate. Mm. By the time someone's at your front door, the key doesn't f***ing matter. Uh, it still totally does. Why? No evidence, break and entry, stuff like that. I yeah, mean, I mean... It, it, <sighs> I, 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 feel like, I feel like that's a really like CSI is real kind of answer. <laughs> Because realistically, every keyhole on Earth is it, so I think it is completely on, scuffed anyway. You're not going to be able to look at it and be like, "Oh, it looks like somebody." Mine's in good state. <laughs> sure, I don't come home drunk. You live in an apartment building, though. <laughs> I mean, come on, like, yeah. I, th I think it. I think it depends on the intent of. Did the... I detect some judginess? <laughs> <laughs> so you're uh, saying you don't come home when you get drunk? Is that? <laughs> Um, oh my goodness! Um, no, I, I think I think it depends on the outed. intent on the the person who's trying to get into your house. Sure. Um, if they're attempting something violent, like yeah, it doesn't make a difference. You're gonna break the door down. Uh, if they're attempting to steal all your stuff, yeah, it probably doesn't make a difference. But if they're trying uh, something sneaky deaky, like then planting a tracker or a microphone or a in camera your house or whatever else, yeah. Okay, but uh, then, you know, let's come let's come back to if somebody wanted to do that badly enough, what is actually probably easier? Social engineering or I would like also think or like just just casually like reverse pickpocketing, whatever that's called, where they just like drop something in your purse or in yeah, your I pocket. Don't, I don't know the name of it either. Like like or I mean realistically, at, in this day and age, couldn't there's they just do couldn't they just I, grab I think, a drone I think and drop a microphone down your chimney? Like honestly though. <laughs> Seriously, though, there's... How do people have open chimneys? I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> okay. It's a, totally a thing. All right. You wouldn't even have to put it down the chimney. I mean, there's listening <laughs> devices that you can get at freaking the spy store on Broadway mm. that you could just aim at someone's house and basically hear anything anyone's saying in there. Like, it's yeah, just... it does get pretty brutal. I, I think that the picture of the key is an active motivator. So you're saying it's kind of like opening the door. Yes. Um, you're going like, oh, here's something you could do. You could 3D print this and break it in my house. Ha 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 ha. And I think people will do it because of that. Yeah, but if they have a malicious intent. I, I think that will like genuinely I, give people malicious Luke, it's, intent. I don't know, man. It's, it's less work to get a gun in many states than it is to go 3D print a key. If you don't know anything <laughs> about some, 3D for printing. For some people, it's going to be less work to get a gun And if you here. do know a lot about 3D printing... Then you could just 3D print a gun. <laughs> like, that's my point, is I just, I don't think that this barrier of this, to acquire ammunition. of this lock is, I, I don't think it's particularly meaningful. Yeah, especially when you have Windows. I, I just like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you had a Mac, on the other hand, you'd be fine. <laughs> but everyone... Sad, Bill. <laughs> Sad, Bill? Um... It's covered in cables. You can just cut a key once you have the picture. That's my whole point. Yeah, that's what Luke is saying. I'm just saying it doesn't really matter because if you wanted to get through someone's door, like lock picking kits are legal and practically free. Yeah. Yeah. Like I kind of want to learn One how to do binding. it just for fun. Mm. I have all the stuff. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I have a range of practice locks. I'm I have sure you do. Whatever picks you'd want yeah, to use. Nothing, nothing you're tools. saying. Nothing you're saying surprises me at all. <laughs> so yeah, no, no problem. Whenever you want to, you want to figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, Dan, do you want to give us one more? <laughs> <laughs> sure. You should come to our team building exercise. It'd yeah, be fun. We did that. <laughs> you guys did lock picking. And yeah, we did. So I buried the. I mean, the how held the shovel. I buried the shovel. <laughs> 
<laughs> we do. We do. Ours are ours are skills themed, so we hang out in the workshop. Okay. And people bring in different projects that they might have, or okay. or things that they could teach each other, and we just do that. Sure. We do those things. So Dan was like painting something. I got a high end airbrush for the first time. And Ooh. Sean and I were working on lock picking. And cool. next time Sean wants to do something with Lego, and I'm probably going to build one of Tynan's CO2 sensors. And Very cool. Uh, yeah, I'll teach you how to solder properly. That would be sweet. That'd be yeah. sick. I've done it before, but I'm going to, I'm almost certainly terrible. Soldering? So yeah, I you're would, terrible. Yeah. I you're worse than it. me, and I'm terrible. Yeah. I make you yeah. good one evening. It's good, great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, it would be nice to learn. Yes. Hello, dot DLL. It was brought up in a pre-show, but why does LMG utilize Microsoft's business ecosystem, not Google's? Where's Apple in this market? How would it be different? I think wow. I, I kind of wanted the end of this. Like, how would Apple's business ecosystem? I don't eco think, I, yeah, I don't think that we could have scripted this any better. Good, good job, Dan. That was the perfect merch message to finish up our conversation about Apple. So first, I guess Luke should go on his thing for anyone who wasn't on the pre-show talking about <laughs> why it exi why exactly it is that we subscribe to three different <laughs> business ecosystems and pay for all of that. Yeah, so this was, this was a long, long rant that I went on in the pre-show. So if you're subscribed to Flowplane or... Uh, there, there's other roads to get it, but I don't have to tell you. Um, you can just find it on Twitch. Wait, no, there's no VOD on Twitch, right? Yeah, get wrecked. Um, float plane. But uh, essentially, the, the short form is that Microsoft covers everything in the workspace, more or less, but it kind of has like B-tier versions of all of it, for the most part. Some of, the, some of them are, are the best. I, I will give them that. But for a lot of it, it's mostly like B, C-tier versions of it. Um, I don't think Teams is the best team communication app. Um, I think Slack leaves a lot to be desired, but I think it's better than Teams. Um I don't think OneDrive is the best like company drive app. Would you SharePoint exist? I know. I think <laughs> Google Drive is easier to use. Um, I also think that the OneDrive like apps, like the uh, web versions of like Word and Excel and stuff like that, are not as good as like Google Docs, Google Sheets, stuff like that. Google I Docs find them collaboration to work with. has gotten really good. It's in the last... very, very. Yeah, good. I can't find anything in my drive. No. But once I find it, man, can I ever collaborate? Oh on yeah. It? yeah, yeah. So like, if you want the best. A collaborative word doc editing you want g suite um and it's probably going to cost you more in like annoyance dealing with microsoft word online whatever OneDrive stuff than it would be to have g suite so then you just have g suite but then our whole we have all three of them situation is we don't have slack for the whole company we just have slack for the developers uh and then teams is for the rest of the company because Teams is just getting the entire Microsoft suite is like cheaper than getting Slack, basically. So we have, we have Microsoft for the rest of it because we get Teams and we also get, you know, local apps for like Word and Excel and stuff. And there's people on the team that absolutely need the, the power, the massive powerhouse that is local Excel. Um, and there's some other good things in the Microsoft 365 business license. Um, so we have that. And then for developers, we also have Slack. And the whole thing is just ridiculous. And it's very annoying. Um, if, if Google could get could figure it out and start making things that they don't abandon um, and could actually make a business chat app, which I I have no idea. And I've, I, I even know people that work there and I haven't asked any of them. I bet you they have their own internal system for communications and they just like don't share it with other people. I bet you that's a thing. They have so many internal tools, it's insane. I bet you they have a chat one. And I wish they would just include it with Google Workspace because Google Chat is not acceptable. There's a reason why, like, basically no one uses it, because um, it's, it's not acceptable. Ridiculous. Man, it's, it's been so annoying the way they've been, like, kind of shoving it down my throat. Like, anytime yeah. I want to share something on Android, oh, you wish you I click this? on Gmail. No. It's like, do you, do you want to use chat? No, I don't want to use chat. No. You guys told me, you kept, you told me you were going to deprecate this, like, eight times. Yeah. And so I switched off of it. Yeah. We used Hangouts. Yes. As a company, we used Hangouts. And it was, like, kind of weird, but it worked. It, well, the best thing about it was that when you searched, it searched everything. Yes. It searched your drive, your email, and your chats. And so once we switched off of it, we kind of adapted to the inconvenience of having to search, you know, these various places. And now there's no way that we'd go back to it because apparently they do use Google Chat, says uh, Karate Swan. Yeah, there's going to be some people, but it's like... They almost, like the developers almost certainly would use like Slack or something, right? 
I haven't used Google Chat in a long time, but I strongly believe so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, who knows? Google Meet uh, is like excellent. Just, Google Meet is great. Just works. I mean, I don't know what version of it I'm using, we, but it seems to be mostly good. We we have switched to using teams for all of our meetings because the calendar invites were getting confusing for people and people wanted to use teams because they're saying that the transcription is better and stuff i haven't tested them against each other i will say having switched to using teams for meetings more often it is definitely clunkier overall than meet it might still be worth using for a variety of reasons i'm not sure i don't know um but yeah so here's why i wanted to talk about this one of the realizations that I've had in my admittedly ooh, just about dropped it, uh, admittedly limited time with the Apple Vision Pro so far is that Apple needs to figure out what the heck they want to do. They're a hardware company, they're a services company, but they don't want to build their services to the point where it compromises their ability to be a hardware company, but they're clearly making a transition and the thing that made this stand out to me was in the Apple marketing for the Vision Pro, I, I keep coming back to this, they've got that lady that's packing for a trip, right? And she gets a call on FaceTime and the whole thing is so seamless and so cool. And it's like, right, but there is one person in my entire life who uses FaceTime. Absolutely every single other person that I interact with is via WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Microsoft Teams, Discord, quite literally anything other than FaceTime. And so what I, what I realized as I was sitting in the Apple Vision Pro thinking about how on earth I interact with anybody outside of this thing was Apple's going to have to decide at some point, are they actually, because this is not a consumer product. It is. But it also... The second you go to that price point... Mm. It also isn't. Yeah. This is, a, this is a professional tier product. I mean, it has Pro right in the name, which yeah. I, admittedly is pretty meaningless yeah. um, at this point, especially for Apple. But it really is. But it really is most useful for me so far as a, as a productivity tool, or at least I can see the most clear path to using it every day at work. Not... Not in, not in, not in my, my leisure time. Um, and what I realized was the biggest thing holding back Apple is the Apple ecosystem, which is sort of an ironic thing to say, but imagine for a I don't second, know if it's true. imagine for a second, I don't know if, you're right. if FaceTime was cross-platform, would that make a difference to your willingness to use this for work every day? If people could just call you via like corporate comms, I mean, FaceTime, I, but, the, but it can just call you with teams. Maybe as long as there's a teams app and as long as it's not a Didn't steaming you say you pile were using of garbage, teams? I was using teams on my laptop. So I was uh, using teams on my laptop and projecting my laptop screen to someone else so while also it, projecting it in front of my MacBook. Mm, <laughs> it's super okay, clunky. See, no, it's awful. See, I see, I see. It's a terrible experience. But if I could just with how seamless FaceTime is just have, you know, people on my call stack up and the whole thing just worked, man, that would be amazing. All of a sudden I'd be like, okay, let's all just get MacBooks. Not quite, you know, we're talking a few generations into this thing. Yeah. But I think I, and you know what people, oh, there's going to be a lot of people who don't agree. Yeah, I think, have you tried to invite someone who doesn't have an Apple device to FaceTime you? Uh, no, you can invite anyone to join you in a FaceTime call, even people who don't have an Apple device. Yes. They can join you in a one-on-one -on -one and group FaceTime calls from their browser. Sure. No login is necessary. They need to have the latest version of either Chrome or Edge. So tell me something. Would you roll out Slack? If that was how it worked, if you could only, if you could invite people, but they like, couldn't call you like, come on. Oh, I see. So that's how it would have to work. Okay. 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 Yeah. So that's, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is yeah, I that's, think that's lame. I think there's an opportunity there though, because nobody hates FaceTime. Nobody yeah. hates iMessage. Yep. This is clearly a piece of hardware that could be 
just awesome for that kind of use. I think there are I plenty want... of workspaces that just only have Macs, though. I'm sure there are. Yeah. But what about all of the other ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would seriously consider... I would seriously consider paying Apple as a services company, even though I don't necessarily have a ton of interest in deploying their hardware. We already do, which is sick. But would you, would you, would you consider FaceTime, iMessage, if they I had a little bit of... I genuinely zero experience with iMessage. I have never used it. It's fine. The way that it handles... Would it be fine for corporate communications? It would be is fine. Is there channels and stuff? The way it handles group chats is pretty good. There's definitely some things that it Dude. would, that it would need. Oh, just like even mentioning group chats, you're just like triggering me about how frustrating Teams is to use. We we have this infrastructure call that we do every Monday and Thursday at 11, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I, multiple, myself and Sean, we can't join it. It'll, it'll show up, like AJ will start the call. It'll show up and say the call has ended. And there's no, there isn't even an option to join. Like Slack, sometimes there might be some problem with the notification or whatever, but you can just click the join button anyways, the huddle button. And even if there's nothing there, it shows that no one's in the call. It'll put you in the call and then it'll detect all the people. So you can like force your way in, even if it's acting weird. Uh, but for teams, it just, it, no, you just can't join. So you have to completely close teams and load it again for it to work. I, I hate how communicating in teams, teams within teams, another very annoying naming thing but in the team's side it's very frustrating um so almost all communication that i end up having ends up happening in group chats anyways it's like what's the point i i don't know teams is very frustrating i don't, I don't know. know i don't know it was just it was kind of a random thought that i had <sighs> i haven't articulated it particularly well i think apple's standing in their own way by tying their software to their hardware. I also think, though, that one of the reasons why they have so many diehard users that are going to buy stuff like this is because they have this walled ecosystem. Sure, but they could also have the experience be enhanced by their own hardware. They could they could create extra value for their users through their hardware. Discord is not than, an acceptable solution for people that keep... Rather than have a gun to their user's head, buy our hardware or you get nothing. It's just, yeah. it's a very, very different philosophy. It's a very different approach. And I think that it's one that requires some serious thought over there. Do we want to be a hardware company forever? Or do we want to be a solutions provider? Microsoft is growing like crazy right now. Oh yeah. Microsoft is absolutely winning. It's absolutely freaking winning. wild. In like everything they're doing basically, except maybe Xbox. <laughs> Even Xbox, I think they're playing a pretty long game here. Yeah. Like all the acquisition stuff. Apparently they're in hot water right now over how many Activision Blizzard people were let go after the acquisition. I mean, obviously they were going to do that, but I guess they were like... They said it was already planned. And like, honestly, no, no, a lot no. of those IPs have been floundering pretty hard for a long time. So it's yep. not too surprising. Um, I, I kind of buy it to a certain degree. Why is Discord not acceptable? I, <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> do, do you want to be here all night, guys? Just just ignore them. Don't the ask them that. Uh, I'm asking you that. No. Just, all right, Luke. Uh, it's just no. it's just not. Okay? I, I like I, it's it there are things that Discord does extremely well and this is one of the reasons why I'm so frustrated about how expensive Slack is because Slack has a lot of the same features but is really expensive and Discord's free. Um but the the calling on Discord is fantastic. Uh, the channel organization is honestly really good. I the how ha permissions are handled awful. Everything you've said so far is arguments for it. I say we switch. You know what? Sure. Let's do it. No, it's a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> uh, how permissions are handled, I understand it's very convoluted, but it's really powerful. Um, and considering in Slack, something that you would hate about Slack so much, Slack is entirely voluntary with how you join channels for the most part. Uh, so you can put people in groups, which is terribly handled but you can put people in groups to give them default channels but they can just join any open channel that they want and anyone can make a channel so, <laughs> so you can't make it so people can't make channels 
Uh, that might be a permission. I don't know. I've okay. looked into it in forever. Okay, because if you just have like a bazillion private random channels, no. But the the main way that this manifests in in a bad way is that organization of those channels is on the user. There you go. The other ones, like people are saying, you can sure, whatever, cool, that's fine. That part I don't actually care about. The part that I actually care about is that the organization of it is on the user. Users which is cannot be trusted to do that. Insane, and I pretty much guarantee, like no one has really done it. I, I've done it to a certain degree, but I'm sure mine could be better. I would care a lot more about doing it really well if I knew it would positively impact other people on the team as well. Whatever. Um, anyways, Discord does that extremely well. Um, there's a lot of things that it does really well. It's authentication and sign-in to the server is, like, not cool on a company level. Uh, it, it, it's like, uh, there's a lot of different things about how you use it and how it flows. This all sounds like vague posty nonsense. Really designed around very social gamery type of communication and not very business communication. Uh, there's too much stuff that is very informal. There's how do we keep people from joining like weird servers? Uh, how do you audit things? You can't audit anything like at all. The, the user control for it is like really not great because it's designed for these open networks of people. Like it's just, it's not, designed for company stuff it's really good it would probably be the best one if it was corporate focused or if they had a corporate focused mode i honestly believe that discord could be the best company communication right uh, because the fundamentals are really really strong but then they just don't have some of the business th businessy things like can can we have single sign-on with microsoft or google so that everyone can have one unified login no that's actually very, very important for a lot of businesses. So there are businesses out there that will not use a service unless it has SSO. Which is It's fair. just straight up a thing. Yep. Uh, like so. managing credentials across dumb, dumb users is such a nightmare. Yeah. Like it, it, it actually totally... Yeah, people in chat are saying like my, my company's one of them. SSO is huge. Yeah. So like not having these these fairly fundamental, extremely corporate businessy things, which it doesn't need at all for what its actual main goal is as a, as a piece of software, but not having them makes it not really work for businesses very well. Right. Um, yeah, there you go. Good job. I'll what are we there. supposed to be doing right now, Dan? Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, well, the show is brought to you today by Grammarly. Wait, really? Oh, okay. Sure. Um, you probably already know about or have been using Gram Grammarly, our sponsor today. It's a free app to help your writing in loads of different ways. Besides grammar and spell checkering, checkering, <laughs> this is terrible, checking, now Grammarly offers generative AI assistance, aiding us in brainstorming, outlining, revising, and perfecting our content. To access Grammarly's advanced AI features, all you need to do is click on Grammarly's logo. If you ever get stuck while writing, Grammarly can help you get started with ideas, outlines, and even tips. Have no time to read a long essay email? Grammarly's reply feature helps summarize emails and suggests responses for more efficient inbox management. You can also use the rewrite feature to paraphrase and keep tweaking until you're satisfied. And Grammarly's been around for 14 years, so you know you can trust them, bro. That is actually in my talking points. Uh, your data is private and secure, and they do not sell your data to third parties. Sign up and download for free at Grammarly.com slash WANshow02. That's Grammarly.com slash WANshow02, and you can get 20% off Grammarly Premium if you want extra features. The show is also brought to you by AG1. Are you sitting at home watching WAN Show with unhealthy food in your hands right now? Oh boy, this is not a question we should have asked. Drop that pizza and let AG1 help you fill in some of those nutritional blind spots. One scoop of AG1 has 75 different vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. It's made to promote gut health, uh, to help promote, to, to, prom to promote gut health, focus, energy, and immune defense. Luke, Dennis, a few other members here at LMG have tried or even use AG1 daily. Uh, Dennis says he drinks it first thing in the morning instead of coffee. Is that what? Oh wow, that's that's Dennis's house. Okay, Why really? Did you replace coffee? Did he? Did he put that? that There's that, no caffeine in it. That's Dennis's place, right? 
I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, he says it tastes like vanilla and pineapple and is quite easy to drink. Because of its convenience, he finds himself taking it more regularly than many other vitamins. Plus, AG1 might save you a few dollars compared to purchasing all the different vitamins separately. They have over 37,000 five-star reviews, and their customers really love their 90-day money-back guarantee. So try AG1, and you can get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag onecom dot com slash wan show go check it out now at the link in the video description finally our show is brought to you by updf they're here to give a boost to those annoying pdf files i can think of a i can't think of a bigger love-hate relationship than my sanity and pdf files uh yeah i before i understood them better i was like why do they exist like that was honestly what i would think oh, i every, still don't understand every single time anyone said no there's there's reasons why it, very good reason why it's we'll talk about it later yeah you want okay the point is pdfs are not the easiest thing to make changes to which is like part of it um updf is a simple ai pdf solution for all your needs with its clean ui it's super easy to navigate and get work done it can handle pdfs across all platforms windows mac ios and android Oh, there was one critical one missing there, but uh, anyway. All you need is one UPDF account for up to four devices, and not only can you edit text with UPDF, you can also modify images, watermarks, links, backgrounds, headers, footers, and more. It makes it so simple, you don't have to hate PDF files anymore. You can even merge or split PDFs for convenient editing, plus their AI features can help improve your work efficiency. You can summarize, translate, explain, rewrite, and ideate your documents all in UPDF. It even comes with cloud storage. And you can save 61% on UPDF Pro plus UPDF AI right now by checking them out at the link down below. 61%, what a random discount quantity. Yes, I don't get it. 61%? No, 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 not that. Well, the... The kind the of uneditability is like, oh, uh, there's so many ways around that. So many ways. Luke, sometimes things weren't made for you. <laughs> Did you ever stop to consider that? No. Everything Luke, should be made for me. It's like a zip file, but if it was a Word document. Yeah. Why is that helpful? Because it, it has a picture in it, and you can look at the picture, uh, but it's a Word document and not a zip file. Yeah. It's, literally, it's like... It's, I want to I want to share a lossless image. Yeah, it's, with it's like pr it's like a printer. Image. Yeah, it's a digital printer. There, there, okay. there you go. All right. Yeah, and it's like just like a printer. It's. <laughs> but it's I just I digital. think I think they're massively overused. I think people using them uh, in the name of security are massively overestimating uh, the amount of security. And I think as humans do, they'll be like, ah, yes, I use thing for security. Therefore things secure, right? And it ends up just being security theater. Elijah's uh, all concerned that UPDF isn't going to sponsor us anymore. Cause Luke's ripping into PDFs. No, no, no. His attitude towards PDFs is exactly why they exist. Why they exist. Yeah. Because dealing with PDFs sucks. Yeah. No, I, I've heard great things about UPDF. I, I, we're, the sponsor seg segment is done, and he does the readings anyways, so I don't need to say this. Luke but, gets paid the same regardless. 100%. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've heard great things about them. I just, they're, man, they're such a pain. <sighs> All right. What do you want to talk about? How about Canada banning the flipper? Sure. <laughs> Canadian Minister of Innovation, uh. Science, and Industry... Francois-Philippe Champagne announced a Beautiful. ban on consumer hacking devices, including the Flipper Zero, in response to concerns over car theft. The ban is likely in response to recent online videos purporting to show cars being stolen using flippers and similar devices. However, it's worth noting that these videos are, in often, are often staged to get views. Yeah. According to the maker of the Flipper Zero, the device can't be used to hijack cars produced after the 1990s yeah. because their security systems have rolling codes that can only be used once. A wannabe thief would not only need to be close enough to the fob to capture the code, they would also have to block the code from reaching the car because it would immediately expire. The Flipper Zero lacks the hardware capacity to block such a signal. Notoriously, young car thieves, known as the Kia boys were able to steal cars using information found in viral videos because some U.S. manufacturers didn't install standard anti-theft immobilization devices 
And thus, their cars could be started with a USB cord or a screwdriver, but that is nothing to do with the Flipper Zero. Yeah, um, Canada likes to do this. We just like ban stuff because something happened, and it's often the wrong thing. It's like it's like if I pushed Linus, and Linus was like, "Ah, Dan is banned." It's like what? Finally, <laughs> well, finally. Okay, I don't think it's quite like that. When was I going to get canceled? The point is that our our politicians are just like your politicians. Yeah, unqualified, yeah. unsupervised. Yeah, it's. It's basically the same everywhere. Yep. Our, this is our Minister of Innovation, Science, and Industry. And look, it's not like I don't understand why we might have, um, you know, a, a discomfort with devices that market themselves as hacking devices. Sure. I mean, I think hacking has a pretty negative connotation. And if, you know, Flipper wanted to not be banned... You know, they would have been wise to stay more underground um, and more, you know, only for people in the know. But obviously, they sell a lot more Flipper Zeros this way. So it's a it's a balancing act. And clearly, they they they've their notoriety has has gotten too great. And someone, you know, had to do something. Please think of the children. But on the other hand, you've got to understand what you're doing when you're the Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. You just banned a computer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, actually. Uh, especially because doesn't the wording get, like, super rough, too? It's, like, electronic device with, like, wireless signals or something? Like, <laughs> isn't it, like, <laughs> every every cell phone ever? <laughs> like, at that point, it, any Android phone that you yeah. can install sideloaded apps on yeah. is, like, is a hacking device? What the f- you are you better talking not about? have a laptop with Linux installed. How could you? Ban Arch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think it's still legal for me to have mine, but it's not legal to sell, buy, or use them. So I can no longer use my Flipper Zero. You can you just have the device, put it on a shelf. Even though I could put it in a little case. Even though I could literally do anything that I could do with a Flipper Zero with something else. If someone gets arrested just for having Kali Linux installed on their laptop, like, do we, do we protest? What I what, suspect, what, do we do? what I suspect is this is the kind of thing where they've made it illegal so that if the cops you catch someone, thing on. catch someone doing something nefarious with it, it's really quick and easy for them to take it. Um, and prosecute it. Um, I think that there's a lot of plausible deniability in the kind of pranks that people are pulling with flipper zeros. You know, you're walking past Tesla's popping open charging covers. It's like, I don't know, that, that could have been caused by anything. If, you know, whereas now they can just take it. So I, I, I kind of, I do understand the convience, but I also think that there's a lot of potential for overreach. If I'm walking around with Absolutely. a Raspberry Pi plugged into a battery bank in my pocket, do, do they take that? I, I, if I remember correctly, under the way that the law is written, like they totally could. They could also just take your phone and anything else. It, it, I, I need to look it up. Like, but, what about pen testing? Do I can I get a license to carry one? Yeah, it, it's <laughs> like, actually very likely that um, Canada in general is just going to become less secure because of this. And in informed actors are always going to have a way to get the thing that they want. Well, so yeah, I mean, it's they, not freaking hard. Yeah. You can, you, man, you can buy, like, you can buy freaking cell phone jammers on AliExpress. They're, they're just openly available. Yeah. They're very illegal to buy and own and blah, 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 blah. It's not like you can't get them. It's not like I can't get firecrackers in Canada. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, I, oh, no. What is Jake talking about? Disclaimer, very illegal. What is he talking about? Oh, he's probably just talking about jammers. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Jake, I know I'm going to tell them it's illegal. I know they're illegal. Yeah. Um, the but they're point very is, easy to get. The point is if I wanted one, if I wanted, if I wanted nighttime at our house to mean cell phones off nighttime, don't use your cell phone, <laughs> then I could do that. It, I would get a call. But it's illegal. I mean, once I turned it off, I you would get a call. You could also make one. I, what are they going to do, like ban soldering irons? My phone's like flipping hot and my battery just died. 
Woo! Yeah. It was doing something. Yeah, it was t- doing something anyway. You know, whatever it was. Uh, I was probably probably trying to get a signal from the jammer that Dan turned on. <laughs> or maybe he, some, maybe he was using a flipper zero to hack my phone. I don't really know what else to say about this other than this is spectacularly stupid. It does absolutely nothing to address the problem. You need to You need to actually find the problem. The problem is that device security is not being taken seriously enough by the companies that make them. That is the problem. If you wanted to ban 100%. any device that doesn't support rolling codes or uh, a certain level of encryption or you know what whatever feature it is that we all use devices like the flipper zero to i identify um you know things that work versus things that are vulnerabilities like if you wanted to ban anything that doesn't meet a certain standard for security sure yeah i'd, I'd uh, yeah I, I, i'd be I'd totally get, down with i that. get behind that 100 percent. but this is like man i don't even i don't even know what to compare this to this is it's just dumb it, 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 it's also it's, it's just like banning 100% hammers not going to solve the problem yeah. it's like banning hammers because somebody used them to break into a house like no hammers have lots of legitimate uses and the fact that someone can use it to break into a house doesn't mean that they couldn't just use a mallet next time like there's no point banning the hammer yeah we still need to drive nails and they could just use a chainsaw it doesn't matter they could throw anything through a window yeah ban rocks no rocks allowed. Excavate the whole country. Yeah. So anyway, I, I know that our our poor friends in America, you know, probably feel like punching bags. The the number of times we've talked about American politicians and how spectacularly stupid they are on this show. Oh, there's so many dumb Canadian. Things. Uh, um, but guys, uh, you know, we uh, we we patriotically criticize our country too. Don't worry, <laughs> yeah. we are just it's as stupid just less as less interesting you. most of the time. Yeah. EU though, Chad's doing good. I mean, they do bad stuff, too. Apparently, Flipper Zero is banned in... Uh, I know they're not part of the EU anymore, but they're in Europe. Uh, apparently, Flipper Zero is banned in the UK. Okay, yeah, but, like, the UK has made one terrible decision after another yeah. for quite quite a period of time. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time that the sun didn't set on the British Empire? How's that going for you guys? <laughs> and that's how wars are started. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Um... Yeah, I don't know. This is this is just ridiculous. Anyone that actually wants to use them for nefarious things will still be able to get or make them. Uh, no problem, even with them banned. That's been proved with uh, things forever. Drugs, alcohol, guns, whatever you want to ban, whatever you want to modulate, however you want to do it, people that want it are still going to get it. Um, if you were going to use this to steal a car, you were already committing Grand Theft Auto. I don't think you really care about... I happen to have electronic device law. Um, so, yeah, way to go. You're just hurting people that are curious about technology and not accomplishing anything. Do we have better news? Is there good news? I don't know, maybe. Uh, oh, well, not that. Uh, Sony back button? Oh yeah, correction from last week. I criticized Sony for not having uh, the ability to move the back button on their Android skin to the right side, like Samsung. Uh, This doesn't appear to be entirely Sony's fault, although they could definitely fix it if they really wanted to. As pointed out by Michelle Rahman, it appears that Sony engineers submitted a change that would add support for swapping the recent and back button positions to the Android open source project in January 2023. It just hasn't been done. But Sony could also do it themselves. So correction, um, it's not in the AOSP, but not correction. Sony, I will not use your phones until you deal with this. And I don't care whose fault it is. It's not on your phone. Another correction. Apparently, the person who said it earlier was incorrect. It is not banned in the UK. It was just confiscated at an airport, which is a completely different thing. And there's some debate over whether it might be illegal. Oh. Like, uh, yeah, I have found a thing. Um, yeah, there's some debate over whether it might be illegal because it might just fall under like things that were already illegal, some but it seems category. to be in a gray area. Got it. Makes yep. sense. Uh, this is great, by the way. That's awesome. Anywho. Let's go. I don't know how to play guitar at all, but yeah. What yeah. else do you want to talk about? Oh my God, everything's wow. Why is it all terrible news this week? Oh, oh, the Florida Senate. Might be booting kids off social media. Speaking of Sick. speaking of American politicians and Based. being stupid, this is like not stupid. Yeah, actually, I actually am completely down with this. And I, I understand there's people that will 
aggressively disagree with me, but I, I'm down. Yeah. The Florida Senate has taken up a bill for discussion that would ban all children under the age of 16 from social media on Sick. the grounds that it has addictive features similar to gambling Absolutely. that are damaging to children's mental health. Extremely, actually. How is this Florida? So sick. The bill doesn't specify any social media platform, but any platform that tracks user activity, allows user-generated content, and uses potentially addictive features, such as infinite scrolling, would be required to enact third-party age verification. I knew they were going to f*** up. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Dang it, Florida! I didn't, I didn't read deeply into the thing. <laughs> All right. And a swing and a miss. <laughs> Florida's House has already passed a similar bill with overwhelming support. If supported uh, by the Senate, it would still require a vote from Florida's governor, who has expressed some concern that the bill is overly broad. Some critics have suggested that requiring ID in order to participate in social media might be a freedom of speech issue. You think? <laughs> what a womp womp, dude. I was so excited about this. Yeah. I was genuinely on board. I wasn't making that up. I just hadn't read that line. Me neither. Oh, man. Yeah, that was really close to being not completely Florided. <sighs> but they, then they Florided it up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, According to a modder by the rough. name of Emoose, NVIDIA has been working on extending its RTX Video HDR feature to also convert SDR games to HDR in real time. Emoose has created and published a mod to enable this in-progress feature, though only on Windows 11. Uh, even as a still-in-progress feature, this gaming HDR converter reportedly creates better visuals in some cases than Windows 11's Auto HDR. Um, that's about all I have to say about that. I just thought that was really cool. cool. It's on Nexus Mods, and if you want to check it out, I still haven't tried the HDR video audio con auto converter, but I really want to. I just haven't gotten around to it. Dude, I've been so busy. We did, oh, we did an AMD Ultimate Tech Upgrade yesterday that went for somewhere between 10 and 11 hours. <laughs> Guess who it was for? I'll just tell you. Bell? Kyle from Creator Warehouse Engineering. Oh. He has been working on this video since before it was AMD Ultimate Tech Upgrade. And it's basically <laughs> three hours. Oh, sorry, three hours. It's basically 10 hours of me, Elijah, and Kyle trying not to kill each other. <laughs> it's going to be great. I feel like this is going to be one of those things. Like, man, we have had some absolute banger. Float plane exclusives lately. Uh, if you are not on float plane, I'm sorry. It's been really good. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, it's been really, you know, it's really not good. for everyone. You know, it's it's extra money at a time when hey, not everybody has extra things money are kicking around. Tight. Things things are things are tight for a lot of people. But dude, we've got extras from Linus's kids build Luca computer. We've got uh, extras from the uh, Medi collab. Uh, we've got. Uh, oh yeah, we've got the um, the CEO interview with Taryn. That's an hour and a half long, dude. We've got we've got some stuff. We've got a lot of really great behind the scenes. It's been it's been a riot lately, and I feel like that video alone is going to have extras like probably on the level of the Call Me Chris collab build. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah it's wow. it's hilarious. We're going to have to cut some stuff because there's definitely some stuff that's going to need to be cut. But Kyle's hilarious, as you probably know. Elijah's hilarious, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, and I'm all right. Pretty funny. I think I can be. I think I can be pretty funny. I actually. Pretty funny guy. I actually had one of what I think is my best on camera jokes. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll watch for it. I, I like the tech upgrades. I watch pretty much all of them. I, I destroyed Elijah. <laughs> destroyed him he couldn't even talk you tell him to do a backflip no no no, no absolutely not not at work uh, man oh man okay this one's worth recounting i actually had one of my best in a meeting jokes this week too i was on fire earlier this week i i've slowed down a little bit i'm really tired from that tech upgrade but uh we were having a meeting about um visual data visualizations for uh, power supply related content for short circuit and for the lab's website because power supply testing is one of the ones that we're going to be ready to roll out in volume soonest yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, compared to all the other categories and um, 
And Lucas from the lab basically had, uh, so it was Lucas and Sammy put together this visualization that was supposed to characterize for the, for the viewer uh, a brownout and the drop in voltages and recovery of their, of their, um, of their rail voltages of the, the 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, and uh, VSB, VS, USB, something, uh, some, some fourth, fourth rail. And basically the idea is that within the ATX specification, uh, you're supposed to be able to lose power for a very, very short period of time, like a, a dozen or so milliseconds or a couple dozen milliseconds. I forget exactly what it is. It's a very, very short period of time, a few tens of, a, of thousandths of a second. Um, and the system should recover without actually losing power as long as those rails bounce back fast enough your computer will not actually lose power in the event of a brownout so he had the he had the incoming ac represented like this and then it goes like this and then it comes back and then during that brownout phase we had like a like a highlighted section and then you see all the other rails go down and then come back and it had lines all over it, pretty much. We had kind of gone through all the other visualizations in the meeting pretty quickly, and we were stuck on this one for probably somewhere between five and 10 minutes. And one of the things that we were really stuck on was how to symbolize uh, a brownout in a way that might declutter the, the, the graph. And um, Taryn and I, kind of disagreed on what we thought was was a good approach for this and at the at at the end of it like we were basically getting to the end of our time and there were a couple more things that we needed to talk about i'm like look here's the situation i know that this is very clear and very easy un to understand for lucas and honestly for sammy for that matter because even if she doesn't know everything about electrical engineering and electronics engineering because uh, that's not her field she does know a lot about data visualization so yeah. for you the labs folks this is probably crystal clear but between me and Taryn we have over 35 years of experience in this industry we're pretty technical we're enthusiasts we're passionate we read a lot of articles um we are not able to fully understand it and are not able to agree on what the best way to visualize this is. And that's probably a bad sign. Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I just, I, th I think I just about killed Gary. <laughs> he didn't laugh. He just looked like he was going to die. <laughs> Anyway, oh, I was very proud. I was like so proud of myself. I was too proud of myself. Oh. Dan's dead. Is he even here? Yeah, he's here. Yeah, he's here. He's just, he doesn't want to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm very happy. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, that was, uh, that oh. was look guys, if you were there, it was very funny. Because it's a bad sign. Just got to get it off the graph. It's, it's too hard to understand. It would be more top of mind when you're in that meeting too. Oh yeah. Like yeah, if it 100%. took you a sec to get it, it would probably yeah. Yeah. Sine wave. Sine yeah. wave. Yeah. Um. Anyway, death by smugness. Look. Okay, I have to do so many meetings, you guys. It's yeah. Like if the I the meetings are getting a little much. Like I I'm just basically in meetings. If I days. if I can't have fun, oh. man, I gotta. Man, I got, you know, I got, I got to make my jokes. I got to have my fun, like managing a business and like, yes, yes. I have a lot of people that to help me manage the business, but it's not like I don't still have to do things. Um, Something I think I gotta, we need to I do have my fun, okay. a little better as an organization. And I'm working on this with the ones that I run as well is having laid out objectives before the call. And then when you complete them, ending the call immediately. Yeah. There's a lot of like, yeah, this has been a good conversation. I, Is there anything else anyone I'm, needs I'm gonna to I'm going to start having up? a counter for how many times I hear that asked. Yeah, does anyone else have anything to... And then it just doesn't end. Nobody says anything, but then the Everyone meeting just doesn't sits end. there, and then you're like, uh... Yeah. It's like, man. I, no. I, I, have st I haven't been doing it consistently, but I've done it a couple times in the last couple weeks where I'm just like, okay, well, if no one needs me, bye. And I just leave. If it's really important, they'll message you. You can join again. When it's when it's pretty obvious that the message is is over, or yeah. the message that the that the call is over. Yeah. 
Not, non-agenda meetings, I think, is like super not the way. Okay, I'm here's one on that. that I'm not 100% sure how you're going to react to. Oh, boy. Google has mm. blocked side-loading in Singapore of certain apps. So as part of a crackdown on financial scams, Google will be preventing Singaporean users from side-loading some apps. Allegedly, these apps misuse Android permissions in order to intercept one-time passwords that a user receives via notification or text. According to Google, over 95% of these apps were installed through side-loading. Now, when a user attempts to install one of these apps, they will instead receive a pop-up that says, this app can request access to sensitive data. This can increase the risk of identity theft or financial fraud. Google has developed this pilot program in collaboration with the Singapore government's uh, cybersecurity agency. The company announced a similar real-time scanning protection initiative in October, which is supposed to roll out first in India. Wait, Discussion uh, question. Hmm. Is it a slippery slope? Absolutely. Google deciding which apps you can or cannot side load absolutely is that is that is it really being blocked though or are they just popping up a notification warning you it because sounds like they will be blocked are you sure because the the like the the title is that it blocks side -loading. i know but i i've read other then, articles other than the summary okay it sounds like it will be blocked company knows they will instead receive a pop-up that says this app can request i get it but this summary here is not the only one that okay. i've read it sounds yeah, yeah. like it will be blocked yeah um this seems bad however we're going to transition to another topic where somebody got scammed out of 25 million dollars because the world's crazy right how'd now. you know i was going to do that uh because it just makes way too much sense all right <laughs> uh things are nuts and you you cannot expect users to understand fully all the different and be constantly aware of all the different currently available attack vectors to the point where like i i almost feel like there's no point in attempting to educate people on it because even educated people are going to screw up because the sophistication level of certain uh things currently is just kind of too high people are saying yeah users aren't tech experts even tech experts are going to get dunked on right now um, with the ability to yeah. like the, the, the topic we're going to get into is insane, but like this, yeah, this is rough. Um, what I wish it was, yeah, was like really aggressive pop-up things that are like, you should not do this. So if it is, then you're good. I think so. Yeah. But I mean, I would even be ha put like five, but like Microsoft tried this with UAC. Put, put, it put doesn't prevent three, people from just clicking it. And then they also have to authenticate through an email thing or, or something like make it like really annoying and put a lot of steps in the way. I'm I mean, totally okay with that. That's a slippery slope too, because they could also do that if you try to install a third party browser now. And I know I'm, I, I know that I'm making a bit of a disingenuous argument here, but okay, they could. Hold on. Apparently it's only internet based side loading sources. Okay. Does that help then? I think so, because so there's still a route around enough, it. Yeah. Okay. Th therefore, it's okay to me personally. So as long as there's, there a should be workaround. a way. Yeah. Okay. There should be right. a way to force a side load. Um, okay. And I, I don't even care. It could be like super annoying. You have to plug it into okay. a computer. I, mean, I don't know about that. Okay. You have to like do something that's very advanced. Tell I'd me be this. Fine with that. Wouldn't the real solution to this though just be system antivirus that just doesn't let anything intercept a one-time pass? password should should anything be allowed to read your text messages as they come in yeah why does anything need to read your text messages as they come in i feel like there's pretty much always going to be a way though it could be screen reading sure grab it that way sure but anything that continuously records your screen maybe that just like it might be able to detect an event of a text message coming in and start screen recording for a certain mm, period of time true. like there's yep. i i would never trust that thing to actually cover those solutions coburn those c issues. says uh Hey, 15 years in, I'll take any sort of Android protection. Yeah. yeah. Elijah, even if you're joking, don't post that. I am deleting it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know how. Oh. Um, it's not working. I thought I'm, yeah, why can't I click that? I can't click that. It doesn't, it, it's, it's text commands. 
Why? Uh, because you and I both didn't want us to spend time on that. But I can click all the other ones. What do you mean click them? Look. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway. Um, do you want us to spend time on that? Nope. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Lenovo made a transparent laptop. So, that's useless. That's cool. We should talk about the topic we were going to talk about, though. Yeah, let's talk about the $25 million that got scammed via deep fake. Luke, you want to do this one? I feel like I've done a lot of them. Yeah, someone also said, uh, Lazarus, legitimate accessibility features need to read your texts. Yeah, like there's things like that too. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't think that's a solution that'll work. Anyways, deep fake scam, uh, $25 million stolen. This is genuinely wild. This makes me think Ocean's Eleven level like crazy. There was probably multiple people behind this, a lot of planning, a lot of prep, all that type of stuff. Big and, and this is one of the reasons why I think you're honestly not going to be able to fully train people to be prepared for this stuff. You're going to have to have procedures in place instead um, that, that layer up protections on these types of things. Like maybe requiring, even if you're on a video call with someone, require, requiring you to call their cell phone to confirm as a form of two-factor authentication or something? I don't know. This is crazy, though. According to Hong Kong police, a finance worker at an unnamed multinational firm was convinced to transfer 25.6 million USD. Big money. To scammers Real through money. a video call where everyone else in attendance, including the company's CFO, were actually audio-visual deepfakes. Whoa. The worker was initially suspicious when he was contacted by the scammers through email, but his concerns were assuaged by the assuaged. fact assuaged by the fact that the video call was attended by several people who looked and sounded like his colleagues. Hong Kong police likewise indicated that they have seen a large amount of recent fraud cases using deep fakes alongside stolen IDs, which totally makes sense. I hate to bring this up, but I contacted a financial institution that I no longer use very recently. And because I no longer use them, I don't remember my PIN or like access. Were you able to like password. easily get back in? I was able to reactivate my account with information that I could Google about myself. Yeah. The fact that that is possible and... And to be clear, it's not just because I'm like a YouTube personality or something. It's the kind of thing that I could easily Google about you if all I knew was your Facebook profile. Like, it was shockingly easy. Um, what the fuck are we going to do? Because you and I laughed, both, both of us, completely without pre-planning it, laughed when we saw that Florida's plan for banning social media use for 16 year olds was a third party database because that's just a, a gold mine that someone's waiting to break into and mine. I don't think I would trust our government or no. any other government to no. do it any better than the third party. No. What the crap are we supposed to do to authenticate it, to secure anything? You like can't really, to be completely honest. Um, Yep. I don't know. With things like social media networks, uh, like there's examples of this on Twitch oh, and no. and other places as well. What? Just look who it is. Made a really good point. Things are going to get really fucked up when stuff like the Apple Vision Pro goes mainstream. Oh, yeah, because, because you become you'll the be, person. You'll be... No, no, not just that. Not just that. No, 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 no. Because you won't be exposed expecting the video feed to even quite look like them. If it was a Vision Pro avatar or whatever, and it was a little off, so what? It wouldn't even raise any alarm bells. Yeah. Now all you have to do is get the voice mostly right. Oh, no. Which people are getting really good at. Oh, no. Yeah. I heard it... Um an AI generated voice, machine learning voice. Oh, I keep, I keep doing it. I keep saying AI. It's not AI. It does. Okay. Whatever. I heard an AI voice recreation of myself hosting power supply, a power supply video. I've heard that too. 
It's it's a, by far the best one I've heard. It's gotten a lot better. The whole like you having a Boston accent for no apparent reason thing is gone. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, for sure. But it's oh, I wonder if I can. I wonder if I better. can dig that up uh, for the people to hear. So we are uh, one of the things that we're working on for um, for the future of short circuit and to to dramatically widen our production pipe. Um, is for a basic power supply video, we are going to take all the testing data, plonk it into a template for the script, which, which was written by humans, very smart humans. Uh, Lucas has done a lot of work on it uh, to, to get it down to the point where it says everything you need to know about a power supply with, you know, variables, um that are altered depending on the results of the power supply and then is read and edited by automated tools with humans involved for uh, quality checks and for fact checking. Um, so what you guys are going to see or hear, I guess rather is a very, very early version of what that would look like. Um, let me see if I can find it. Oh, I have audio playing. Uh, I will fix that. I, it is now fixed. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can find it. Bo, 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 document shared with you. Um, you know what? I'm gonna search for Lucas because we don't actually talk about that many things by email. Oh. Oh shoot! I found a draft email I never sent to him. Gosh darn it. Okay. Okay, uh, can you run interference for me for a minute here, Luke? I uh, Someone just linked me that someone apparently made a uh, Titanic uh, My Heart Will Go On cover with me singing it. So that's horrifying, and I'll have to watch that later. But um, Okay. I don't know. I could do another topic. Do you need that much time? Yeah, do, do another topic, and I'll try and find this. Okay, what's, what's left? South Korea jails PUBG player. South Korea's Supreme Court has upheld the prison sentence uh, of a conscientious objector to a year and a half in prison for refusing mandatory military service, in part because he is an avid player of PUBG. According to Korean prosecutors, the man's participa participation in violent video games and his lack of effort to spread his beliefs is evidence that his morals... His moral objection to violence and war is insincere. The man reportedly refused to join the military on the grounds that it disregards human rights and gives rampant unfair orders to enlisted soldiers. Discussion question. Why do we treat playing video games as indicating a tolerance for real world violence? Is it because players participate in the fictional violence in a way uh, that a moviegoer doesn't? I have no idea. Um, yeah, that's wild, eh? Uh, <laughs> I think yeah. this was more one we were just kind of reacting to. We're going to just say it like and some, not really discuss it. Some much. real actual person is actually going to jail because the fact that they play PUBG means that they don't object to violence. <laughs> that is fucked up, dude. I wonder how many video games... What's going on over in South Korea right I now? I play that I would just be super not down to do in real life. Probably a lot. You ever play Doom? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're killing demons, though. Yeah, but that may be a little... A little Isn't dangerous. there, like, a whole thing where, like, even uh, people who have, like, strong religious objections to killing are like, no, Doom's cool or whatever? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, Doom, Doom has thing? some really, really interesting religion lore behind it. Um, it's uh, If I remember correctly, it's very Catholic. Um, Doom guy is canonically Catholic. Okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Doom was actually a pretty bad example because it's, I guess it's the morality of the actions, not the danger. So I don't know. GTA. Oh, you don't want to be a criminal? Why would you play criminal game? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. Kind of rough. I'll look for another one if you still need more time. I don't want to. Oh, I've got one. I don't want to bug Lucas. I'll, you know what? I'll bug Gary. I mean, Google rebrands anyway. Bard to Gemini launches paid tier and mobile app. Google rebranded its Bard chatbot to Gemini, the name of the uh, language model the company introduced back in December with a demo that grossly exaggerated its speed and capabilities uh, and will be rebranding 
Duet AI for Workspace to Gemini for Workspace. Uh, hey, Gary, you are on. Uh, you're on the WAN show. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you survived my sine wave joke in our meeting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to show the people the um, the early version of the audio of Linus reading um, that uh, that power supply overview uh, script from Lucas. Uh, do you do you know do you know the one I'm talking okay. about where it's the Linus AI voice? Yes, sir. Uh, do you mind do you mind linking do you, actually do you mind emailing that to me in some form that I could play it for the people? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're All right. quite welcome. All right. Chat's uh, wishing you a speedy recovery from whatever it is that you're suffering from right now. Yeah, uh, Lionitis. Let's I was going to say, I think that's you. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Oh, God. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Google's following in the footsteps of Microsoft, who have finally made it clear that uh, literally every AI product they make is called Copilot. Gemini Advanced is a paid version, uh, paid version powered by the more powerful Gemini Ultra 1.0 model, accessible through the new Google One AI Premium plan that's a that's a name uh it's 20 dollars a month the same price as ChatGPT plus but it also includes the benefits of google one in general uh which i think is going to be listed if i click on this link but it includes like expanded drive storage um yeah you get expanded drive storage if you have the ai premium one you have two terabytes of drive storage so that's a ton um Google Store Rewards. I've never even heard of that before. Google Meet Premium Video Calling Features. Google Calendar Enhanced Appointment Scheduling. Uh, stuff like that. So you get other things instead of just um, the Gemini AI stuff. Gemini is available on the web in 150 countries, but more interestingly, as a standalone Android app in the US only. Also accessible through the Google app on iOS. Android users in the U.S. Uh, can select Gemini as their device assistant instead of Google Assistant, which is actually probably a massive improvement, considering it doesn't feel like Google Assistant has gotten better in potentially ever. Uh, has It has an overlay that can be drawn up over any app to read your screen and do stuff, which Assistant used to do, but doesn't now. Uh, early feedback has confirmed that Google overhyped Gemini. Most impressions uh, that Riley has seen claim that ChatGPT4 is still better, but we don't know right now, I guess. Discussion question. I'm, I'm saying it. I'm saying it no matter what. Uh, why does Canada suck? <laughs> And then Dash, That's sorry, fair. this isn't a better question. I have to go. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, uh, thanks, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We just get stuff after America. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah, like the Vision Pro. Everywhere sucks. Yeah, especially Canada. <sighs> um, South Park got it right. Floppy heads. Blame Canada. Yeah. One road. Uh, did you get the file? I'm working on it. Okay. I'm running out well, of Well, Gary's working on it. I mean, we could just do Wan Show After Dark. I think we've actually got a surprising number of merch messages, given that we launched a t-shirt with a collar. Mm. Um, so <laughs> we might want to get started on them at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's also the planetary shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no I, I, I know. I have to just... And, and, and the, you know, and the store's screwdriver great. bit sets are just going to fly off the shelves. Yep. Realistically, they're going to fly off the shelves regardless. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to give people a lot of warning before we make any adjustments. Yeah. Um, all right. Is there anything else? Okay. Is there anything else in here that we want to talk about? Oh, we didn't even talk about the Funimation libraries being deleted. This is like a huge deal. Yeah. Funimation. Uh, or so, sorry, Sony, which has owned Funimation since 2017 and Crunchyroll since 2021, will be merging the two services, keeping the name Crunchyroll, as well as deleting 
digital copies of content that users purchased through Funimation. Owning something digitally doesn't mean crap at all. Codes for these digital copies were included with physical Blu-rays or DVDs of anime dubbed and released by Funimation as a way of ensuring that customers would always have access to the content that they purchased, even if they were away from home or they lost their physical copy. Crunchyroll will also be increasing in price from $80 to $100 annually. So basically, um, Sony, go fuck yourself for this. Yeah, that sucks. Um, Why don't they just offer it through Crunchyroll? If I had to guess, I would say that this was not actually a super simple decision, and it's possible that whatever Funimation's licensing was for these perpetual copies that many rights holders are pretty cagey about, blah, 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 non-transferable, something, something, something. There's probably a reason, but it f***ing sucks, and I just don't really care anymore. I don't care what the really Find good reason was for. Find or what, what the really good reason was. It doesn't matter. When someone buys something, I get it. They're only buying a license to use it. But they no. bought a license to use it in the way that, in good faith, they understood that it was for, and I think you understood too, and that should continue. Like, it's the... Uh, yeah, Gev Dev in Full Point Chat said, Crunchyroll doesn't have the infrastructure for it from the sound of it. The Funimation site is shutting down. Yeah, I don't care. Build it. If you're going to just like delete all this stuff that people bought, you, you need to provide an alternative solution. You know, like just. Shoot. Uh, Gary is, um, has not sent that. Um, and now I'm sort of wondering if there's anyone else who might know where it is because maybe he's having a hard time finding it. I do. You know where it is? Yeah. Well, why, did, why didn't you just tell me? Oh, I found it. Can you message Gary real quick and tell him I found it? Why don't you? Uh, because I'm going to bring it up. Okay. I have to email it to myself. <laughs> this way we're working in parallel, Luke. It's efficient. Nice. You wouldn't understand. Usually I'm the only one who works <laughs> while I'll actively live on the show. Um, well, yeah, because someone has to talk to the people. I thought you were just yeah, We'll just let Dan zone. do it. Okay, uh, Dan, you're on. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Jesus, Dan. Okay, forget it. <laughs> okay, is my, is my audio working? Uh, no, no, it's not. You were so you were so lively last show. Uh, I become you're, all you're, tired at the moment. You're fired up. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, hey, uh, will Luke be able to hear this? I'm trying to be suave. <laughs> I've heard it before. I know, but like, just you know, so we can oh, all experience yeah, yeah, it together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Luke, it's is this your first podcast? Come on, man, <laughs> yeah. get it together. Yeah. Okay, Dan, are we good? I mean, in a way, I'm yeah. not hearing anything. Uh, well, I'm not playing. Anything. Okay, then, <laughs> then then give it. We're firing on so many cylinders right now; it's oh, insane. But yeah. Mom, it's my turn with a brain cell. <laughs> I worked so many hours yesterday. Okay, but Kyle's upgrade video is going to be amazing, and the behind the scenes on Float Plane are going to be amazing. Just go subscribe to Float Plane. Okay, let's yeah. do this thing. This is the 1000 watt Focus GX1000 manufactured by Seasonic with a current MSRP of 250 US dollars. It is a fully modular ATX 3.0 power supply with an additional hybrid fan mode. The power supply comes in sturdy packaging and measures 150 by 86 by 140 millimeters. Considering cable flexibility, it has an effective depth of 190 millimeters. The modular cables are plastic insulated of good quality and are really flexible. This should cause no problems while building and cable managing your computer. The provided cable set includes a single 12 vaporware cable, allowing it to power all types of high wattage GPUs. The Focus GX is a... All right. How do you feel about it? How do you... I, I don't mean the, the quality of it or whatever. How does hearing that make you feel? My first... It's like, I feel like I should remember saying it. Yeah. I should remember saying it in a really weird, disjointed, the, the way, not how I would say it way. The way that I describe this to other people that have heard it is to me, it feels like you just had your wisdom teeth taken out. You're on a little bit of meds and you've got cotton in your mouth. Yeah. And it's a bad mic. The intonation, that, like, like the, the, the timber of the voice is surprisingly close yeah the timing's way off the cadence is there's it, certain ways that you say things that don't line up like I, yeah. I, can, I can tell it's not you but if 
I, for example, was the one recording it because this is purely generated. I don't think so. I do think so. I don't think so. I do think so. I'm rather certain it's not. I know the person who did the project and they told me it was voiced by someone and then uh, edited. How sure are you? I mean, I can show you the messages. No, no, I... I no, no, I... I Ed I told me. To it doesn't sound like someone voiced it. Okay, whoever voiced it clearly wasn't... Um, Isn't that how we did the Spanish I, One of my things that I sent to Ed is like, yeah, it seems like a, a Linus who has cotton balls in his mouth but isn't very tech savvy. And he's like, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, at any rate. Um, okay, so then... No, no, I believe you. I believe you. Nope. What? Okay, so it's not... But I, Luke, I believe you. This is such well, a waste of time. Out, he just wants to work on his phone more. Oh, my goodness. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. I, I, I don't care who it was. All the right. point is that with someone who was a little more tech-savvy, who had even the tiniest amount of practice imitating my cadence... Yeah, like this, this, is, this is the same thing that made me think about, the, you know, that like oh, $25 million heist, whatever it was? It's like, yeah, it with with more practice time. Yeah. Because if someone just like listens to you talk about a thing enough times, figures out how you're going to say $250, figures out how it uh, is more familiar with the subject matter. This is very likely the first time they did a read through, um, yep. all this other type of stuff. Um, yeah, I think you could basically nail it. There are some problems. It sounds like it's on a really bad mic. The like quality yep. of the audio is really low. Yep. Um, but I mean, we're close enough now that it's like you can kind of you can make it out. Yes, absolutely. And it's scary. Yeah. With that said, I mean, it's going to be really convenient if we wanted if we wanted the entire you know power supply channel to be hosted by Linus. I don't know if we should. I don't know. I don't know either. But maybe I we genuinely wouldn't. don't know. Maybe one out of every four would be hosted by Linus. I don't know. Whatever we figure, whatever strategy we settle on is, though. Digital Linus. We could scale it just like that. VTuber. VTuber hosted. I mean, I've, I've been talking for years yeah. about how the best way for us to safeguard this company against, you know, my untimely demise or eventual, you know, actual retirement or whatever you it is. You not having hydrofacials? Could be, exactly. Could be... <laughs> VTubering yeah. our most recognizable personalities, figuring out, you know, what that looks like in terms of compensation and licensing and, and technology, you do whatever, right? Um, and building a scalable business around that. I mean, there's companies that only exist as, as virtual influencers already today. It's not like this is some kind of weird sci-fi that I'm you know, imagining. This is, this, oh, is totally. a, this is a real thing right now. And it's winning right now. The only difference is that we would, you know... Yeah, when's the Philly in collab? I don't know. I think Elijah's in contact. Oh. So, so it's, it's moving, I I'm, think. I'm Phil, Philly does backflips. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn, Luke. Okay, you actually need to stop baiting him and doing I'm a backflip. I don't want him to get hurt. Yeah, he showed me a video of him doing one, and yeah. I was like, yeah, you shouldn't That's do fine. Yeah, don't... Yeah. yeah, just stop baiting him. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe we should do that when you guys are remote. <laughs> Somebody just becomes a VTuber. Like for Wan Show? Yeah, because um, I can I can intersperse that into the actual set. Have to no get problem. Like a rig and stuff. I don't know anything no, about it. No, we could figure it out. Yeah, it, it's very doable. Okay. Um, I, I know like genuinely nothing about it. Anyway, Funimation. There's someone in chat. Zero deleted. transform. Not cool, dude. I run a VTuber studio with AAA motion capture hardware. Yeah, it's it's today. It's it's right now. It's right now. Yep. All right. Is there anything that is left before we... No, I don't think so. I think it's time for Wan Show After Dark. All right. Let's do this thing. Did we do the jobs thing? We did. Yeah. Um, we did. Very early in the show. Yep. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. Oh! All right. Maybe hit hit Luke first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now uh, I... Luke, Luke. Linus did it. Mission accomplished. What? <laughs> It's okay, Dan. You're going to be all right. <laughs> I took, take my headphones off for one second. <laughs> oh, man. Actually, I need to pee pee. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope everything comes out okay. <laughs> Hi, Luke. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you wanted you wanted me to give Luke one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dan, are you good? I'm looking for it. 
Uh, what's up, boys? Luke, when and boy. if you have a... <laughs> boys? What's up, boys? Uh, boy. Luke, when and if you have a cheat day or a cheat meal during your exercise journey, what do you eat and why? Uh, it's, it's usually because I'll be, uh, like, eating out with people. Um, and I'll, I'll usually try to get, like, you know, somewhat of a safer option, but... I, I let myself go a little bit more then. Something that I'll like to have is like Indian food. Uh, there's an Indian food plate. I don't want to name it because I don't want to just run it over completely. But there's an incredibly good Indian food place locally that I really like going to for lunch. Um, and if I'm having a lunch meeting for some reason, I will often suggest going there because it's incredibly good. Uh, there's also a place that I like going for pho. So I'll have Indian food or pho. Um I think I know the place you're talking about. That place is You probably excellent. know both of them, to That's be honest. Like and they're extremely good. The one good one, and it's so yeah. good. For for which? Uh, for the Indian. I'm not sure mm-hmm. I know the pho. Do we should go sometime. Do you like pho? Yeah. We'll go sometime. Um, I think really that's good. also local, too. I might yeah. have gone there with a couple other people. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. It's a, it's a, Both of those are very common haunts for people that work here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I like I won't I won't uh, but uh, but I'm not also not gonna just like you know oh I'm getting a cheesecake with whatever and blah, 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 blah. like I, I don't I don't really like go off but uh, I'm no longer like my my like diet right now is if the if the food is planned it's very structured um, but if I'm like out with people or whatever I'll I'll get stuff it doesn't matter but I try not to go too nuts that's all yeah sorry I didn't really like specify anything. But yeah, you're you're not like a person who goes. Like, I'm going to eat an entire cake and on no. my cheat day. No, like, I I don't, I don't know. I'm not. I also I don't even desire that. Like I don't I don't even think cheat days are a good idea. No, no. Who are you, who are you cheating on? <laughs> it's just yourself. Can you believe we Pretty made much. it this far into the show and neither of you has made a joke about me getting a facial? <laughs> that would be crass, Linus. <laughs> it felt like it was like actually too low bar it was like too easy. that's too low brow yeah no no i'm okay with it being really low brow it was just too easy plus we know you well enough that you get those all the time anyway <laughs> got them <laughs> hello and the beard makes it a lot harder to clean up oh i know i know <laughs> hello dealo as this a business to be classy <laughs> Uh, uh, hello, DLL. As a business, why wouldn't Steam create Steam Plus gaming service? Is it just small potatoes compared to their 30% or too complicated for such a large platform? I hope they never I think, do. I think the licensing is extremely complicated. If it was only for Valve games, yeah, it would be no problem for them to just have a, a Valve subscription to their games. In fact, I don't know, I, I, I suspect that hardware as a subscription is going to become even more prevalent. I mean, there's that TV that's free as long as you look at ads or whatever. Like, I, I, I mean, in a way, you know, financing is just hardware as a, as a subscription. It's not like they can't repo it if you fail to pay for it. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a rent to own, whereas at some point I could totally see a Steam Deck for, Steam Deck is $10 a month. It's not four hundred dollars. It's ten dollars a month, and they just assume that over it'll be the, more expensive than that. You know, or whatever it is. But I think I think you kind of get my point, right? Like yeah. the, the 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 point is that as long as it's first party, nothing would prevent Valve from doing things however it is that they want to do it. Um, but when it comes to third party games, I mean, they can't even they can't even manage to get guys like uh, you know EA to not require you to also install Origin on your stupid computer, let alone agreeing to. Um, you know, participate in this in, in this you know games pa- game pass com- competitor or whatever it is. Um, I I think it's I would actually be kind of into it to be <sighs> honest with you. Yeah, I mean, what if it just I, I'd like to see Valve innovate. I'd like to see how them... is that innovation? Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, it's not innovation if they just do what everyone else is doing. So that's why I was going to suggest a way that okay. maybe they could innovate. All right. So here's something that would be kind of cool. Like if I could buy. Uh, a Steam Pass subscription, and it entitles me to you know X amount of dollar value of games in my library at any given time. But I could return games and take them out, kind of like a library system or something like that. I don't know. That's just that's completely off the top of my head. 
But I could see something like that being an innovation, yes, because you could go back and reborrow a game at your discretion. If it's still there. So you're kind of you're kind of creating you no, know, well, I would expect Valve to innovate that too. So I could curate my own library, potentially. That'd be kind of neat. If I wanted to keep something, instead of it just being like Netflix, where that show just like disappears and you can't watch it anymore, I could decide, you know what? Yeah, I want to I want to just keep I want to keep my old you know, Steam Plus library. I don't want any of the new stuff and I can just like keep it forever, keep it in perpetuity. Or I could be like, oh yeah, you know what? No, I, I want to try something new and I just like return one of my games. Like, oh yeah, okay. Like I and my family share group yeah, can't play this game anymore. Yeah, but once you return that but... game, what if it's been removed off of Steam? Well, you, you, you wouldn't be able it. to get it again. That's what I was saying. Maybe there was a miscommunication. That's what I meant. Oh, okay, sure. I just mean, I, I could see there being room to innovate in that space. Um, and if there was anyone who was going to do it in a not anti-consumer way, maybe it would be Valve. I hope they don't do it because I don't think there is one. And maybe that's the not anti-consumer innovation we need <laughs> is Valve just not doing it. But I, I would be totally like if, if, if inside of Valve, they were like, Hey, let's like try to thought experiment this thing and figure out if there is a way that's totally cool with that. Sometimes you got to you know, peer into darkness. Um, I don't think there is a way. If they prove me wrong, great. But I, I don't, I don't think there's a way because because of all the things that I've talked about okay. on my show before. Of like, if you if you end up going subscription services, this, there's there's literally actors and and directors and stuff talking about this publicly right now. But with everything being subscription service, uh, the only things that get made are safe. Uh, there's no all that type of stuff. All yeah. right, Mister Subscription Services are evil. What's that? I didn't say subscription services were evil. Oh, okay, okay. Nice so, little okay. hot dog hamburger you got going on. What if on. they did this? Did what? What if everything that you got through your pr subscription service, you had... You like, can we, download did, these videos. I, can, can you let me finish? Them. Okay. It's a terrible comparison. <laughs> Just clean your, your beard after. Is dog <laughs> <laughs> your comparison is dog I got water. some paper towels over here. So my point is, my point is, what if it worked like that? What if whenever something is in your library, you could, you, you, you got it permanently and it was more like a, uh, just, just hold on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is one of those things where it's like, all I'm saying is consider a possibility. I just, I don't understand. Like if, if, if it's going that far, then you have it, you own it. So then like what, how, how is, how is Valve going to get any developers? All they, all they asked was what about Steam Plus? They didn't say it had to be exactly the way it is now. So I'm saying... No, no, I get that. I just don't think what you're talking about is even possible. Well, can, hold on. Can I finish talking about it? Sure. So what if it was like Floatplane, where through the subscription, you are getting new content? So it's kind of... It's almost more like a... Uh, it's almost more like... What are, what are they called? Those, uh, those mail subscriptions, something boxes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Help um, me, Help me chat. Uh, something boxes. It's not loot, no, loot not crates? loot boxes. It not loot crates. No, it's a thing. It's loot a, crate was a brand. Crack boxes. Oh my god. Subscription boxes. Sure, subscription boxes. I thought there was mystery a boxes. I don't know. I, th I thought there was another name. The point is, but like subscription boxes. So so, so, so developers you get, would sign up. So you get new things. Valve curates the new games that you're gonna try with their subscription so, service. You own the games afterward. You can go back and you can reopen that crate anytime you feel like it. Just like on Floatplane, you can when you are subscribed, you can download any video. We have no cap. You can download the entire back catalog of anything you want, exclusives, different channels. All the infrastructure people listening right now are going like, "Oh goodness!" And yeah, it it sucks on our end. But yeah, it, but you but you can do that. Yep. And then the only difference once you cancel your subscription is you just don't get, you don't get the new ones. You don't get the new content, and you can't come download it again. I mean, that's something that I could see being a not evil, you know, innovation that that Valve could that's that an Valve could implement. One. And they, they could even have they could even have gambling mechanics. Some of them. So maybe you get two games. Out of out of there, there's eight, and you'll get one will be a random one, but you can pick one, you of, can them, pick one of them or something like that. Like I'm just saying, let's be open minded. I just think that's a completely different thing now. You've gone so far away that it's just humble bundles subscription version, um, which is like fine. Hold on. 
Well, hold on. What was the question, though? Uh, something, something. Steam Plus gaming service. I mean, yeah, I just... The original question's open enough that this is legit. I'm not saying that... Sure. Yeah. Sure. I just, I just mean, I think there's ways to do subscription gaming and have it not be totally toxic. I think that is not totally toxic. I just also think that that sort of doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't think that would actually catch on. Um, Good. there might be ways to do it. Maybe, maybe, I think a lot of them will have the same problems as, as standard subscription stuff. Like I said, though, like if Valve, if Valve wanted to sit in a room and try to figure this out and they did find out a way, then that's great. I just, I struggle to see how it can be really possible because in this version, like, yeah, maybe they do. Maybe it is very similar to what you're saying. Maybe it's a monthly thing that you get. Just like with those old subscription boxes that were popular for a while. Maybe it's a monthly thing. You log into Steam on the first and you have a new thing that you click on and it's like, hey, you have these new games. Uh, maybe they're even partially curated because they know some of your interests based on games you've played and stuff. So maybe they'll go like, oh, we noticed last month you played a, games that are, uh, a bunch of games that are like, that are like this. We thought you might want to try these things. You played Slay the Spire. Maybe you'll enjoy Across the Obelisk something like that um we included that in the thing that could be kind of cool i don't think that would take off as much as an all access pass yeah apparently psn plus does something kind of like this as well so anyway but like, i do think to your question though uh, it would be pretty small potatoes for valve compared to the kind of money that they print on um, an annual basis just taking 30 percent of every game that sells on steam so and not just game sales, right? Um, so it's a cool idea, but I, I, I doubt that it has any kind of serious momentum over there, at least for the time being. I think you're also going to run into a problem where it's going to be a lot of the same games, a lot of the same developers, and probably older games, unless Valve starts pumping tons of money into the creation of them, at which point they might want some amount of um, creative controller input, and then we start running into the same problem with gaming subscription services where the uh, company that runs the subscription service ends up uh, pushing in for creative control because they want things that are going to guaranteed win, which is like a huge problem. Would you like another one? Yeah. No. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. <laughs> Hi, Wancho. I recently took a trip to Europe and my LDD backpack was stolen with my MacBook, oh. DSLR, lenses, and some miscellaneous tech. Oh. What's the most heartbreaking loss of tech you've experienced? I think uh, I've told this story before, so I'm not going to go through Oof. the whole story. But when I left my, my pocket PC at the ice rink, like it had my calendars and everything on it. And there was no cloud sync back then. So I had to like set Let's everything up on. manually again. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sucked. That really sucked. I haven't lost much. I left a phone on a plane. That's probably it. Oh, yeah, there was the time I left my laptop on the car and drove. Ooh. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, I very recently... I have this... One of the 64-ounce water bottles that I've sticker-bombed. Um, and it's my, like... I have it in my car... I bring it into work and I bring it into the gym, uh, but it like stays remote. Like I don't bring it home. And then I have another 64 ounce water bottle at home and I have my AirPods that I work out with and the water bottle and the AirPods are missing. Aww. Can't find them anywhere. I checked lost and found here. I checked lost and found at the gym. It's not at home. It's not in my car. The fact that it's both of them. I'm pretty sure they were taken. My biggest thing is like, why'd you take the water bottle? Like, it's, it's sticker bombed with a bunch of stickers I can't get again. It's a good water bottle. It's a bottle. sick water bottle, and you're what at a gym. What do you mean, why'd they take it? No, I get that. It's the, an I get awesome that. water. No, I get no. That. Can you stop Just... disrespecting the hard work of the Creator <laughs> Warehouse team? I get that. And especially at the gym, because everyone wants the really big water bottles yeah. when you're at the gym. I'll actually go through, like, half or more of that in one gym session. Like, it's perfect for at the gym. I love that water bottle. It's just like, ah. Like, the, the dollar value was in the AirPods. 
leave me my water bottle that is custom sticker bombed. Like, I, I, I literally can't get a lot of these again. It's kind of annoying. I really liked how it looked. It's like when someone steals your wallet. And you're just like, could you have just taken the the cash and left it there? Exactly. Like, this is actually just really, really annoying. Like, I'm going to cancel every one of those credit cards before you do anything. Yeah. Just... The credit card company is going to go after their money. Like, you're not... Like, uh, just... Any chance it's newer AirPods? No, um, because it's me. So I have replacement ones now, and they're also the old cheap ones because it's me. Um, It's just... It just sucks. It's very annoying. But the main thing that I'm annoyed about is not the tech product. It's that someone took my water bottle. Because I love that water bottle. I know where I can get a new one. I know I can get a new one. I just... Ugh. Headed to the end of the earth, Nuku Hiva, for diving. Any places on your Hiva? bucket list? Animals you're chasing. Seems to be a island in the French Polynesia. Wow, cool. Very. I still wanna I still wanna scuba dive in Australia. That'd be sweet. Yeah. That that's on my list. I have recently gone on a few dates with someone and I could use Luke's Show off one hundred percent success chicken recipe in the near future. When will we get that video? I've been told I need to film it for a float plane exclusive. It's coming. Yeah, so that's gonna be a thing. Don't 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 look at his eyes. <laughs> don't look at his eyes. <laughs> Hey DLL. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> hey DLL. <laughs> oh, Recently heard about a long range one kilometer Wi Fi with enough bandwidth for video calls. Have y'all heard about this and is it even real? I have heard about it. I am so excited to try it. Ooh. I haven't gotten my hands on it yet. Mm. I want to. Um, I've already flagged it for the writing team. I missed writers meeting today because I was busy filming our PS5 killer. Oh. $500 PC that's pretty strong. Interesting that you're calling it a PS5 killer, not a console killer. Did PS5 well, just win that hard? <laughs> what, what games would we play on rough, an Xbox killer? <laughs> get, get owned. Um, oh, man. Anywho, uh, <laughs> so hopefully we're getting in touch. I totally want to try it. It sounds amazing. It's different from what we've shown in the past with Ubiquiti's uh, dish-based long-range Wi-Fi solutions in that it seems to be more just uh, non-directional. You just, everything's just connected. It, sound, it seems super cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Sweet. Hi, Linus. Fellow tech dad here. Any advice on long-distance parenting? I work overseas away from my child and kids and, uh, sorry, my wife and kids most of the year. Is there anything other than video calls to alleviate missing them? That sounds horrible. Wow. Um, I don't think I could do it. I, uh, the only advice that I have is uh, stay strong, brother. Wow. I, uh, Aren't there like, uh, I wonder how old their kids are. Did they say in the thing? Did it say? Nope. Hmm. I think there's these like presence pillow things that like gl- glow. The the other one will glow when there's weight on the one of them. Oh, okay. And I've been told that it helps like if you're feeling really homesick or whatever, it helps to like know. I don't know. I haven't experienced this, so I have no idea. But I've heard that's a thing and like people say it's like actually good. So I don't know. Hey, LLD, I will be in Japan this summer for an internship doing data analysis with field programmable gate arrays, FPGAs. What do you think the most interesting use case for FPGAs are? Uh, Also, Luke, what should I avoid in Japan? FPGAs are one of those things where I I wouldn't even begin to tell you what I think the most interesting thing they're used for is because they are used for everything. everything. They're either used in final deployments, and that's why a lot of things are really expensive. Um, So one example is those USB 3 extenders that I have. Mm. If that was an ASIC, it would cost a fraction of what it does, but it's an FPGA, so it's really, really expensive because you're buying fully programmable processors for both sides yeah, that these, sounds really expensive. Yeah, USB to fiber yeah. uh, boxes, right? And they're handling high bandwidth, low latency. So that's what they cost, right? Um, 
And so it's either in mass production or mass-ish, or it's in the prototyping of basically everything. So I don't know, everything. FPGAs are sick. There, I said it. Check out Analog, analog analog.co. Yep. They make wicked cool stuff. Check out, check out Alibaba.com. Oh yeah. Yeah, this shows up on the subreddit this week. (laughs) Dare me to order I was going to say, are you guys going to get one? Unfortunately, I would have to order 500 pieces. Oh my goodness. I love that the number of people that don't understand how our screwdriver works. Yeah, this isn't the same Drives me absolutely crazy. This isn't like a third shift situation. Guys, there is no Chinese factory to run a third shift. How the fuck many times do I have to say this? Before people will somehow process that the LTT screwdriver is not some made in China rebadge. It just f***ing isn't. (laughs) And no amount of (laughs) whatever it is that you're doing over there is going to change the actual reality that it just isn't. We collaborated with Megapro. Licensed their bit storage, licensed their ratchet, heavily modified their ratchet design. At this point, with the stubby screwdriver, we have actually modified their bit storage enough that we are no longer dependent on the patent for it. Um, The ratchets are produced in China. The shafts are produced in China. The plastics are all produced in Pitt Meadows, British Columbia. The assembly is done here in the greater Vancouver area, there is no third shift. Just sit the f*** down. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, anyway, uh, this was still pretty funny because... Um, yeah, a sample is apparently about the cost of these guys buying one of our screwdrivers. So if you order a sample, what's very likely is they will simply buy one of our screwdrivers and oh. send it to you. They've ripped the photos directly off of our site. Oh, nice. Other than it seems like attempting maybe or maybe not to like blur it out a little bit, blur our logo a little bit. They've even included our like crusty rusted bits that we use to demonstrate that you can install standard size bits in it. Um, I would, I would totally order one to see if it's, if it's uh, even a, a somewhat close copy But the issue is that they want you to order 500 pieces. And there's no way I'm going to order a sample to see what they can make because they're just going to send me one of my screwdrivers. If I wanted one of my screwdrivers, I would just walk into the warehouse and grab one. Yeah. Um, Is the listing a scam, though? Yeah, the listing is in all likelihood a scam. So there's a lot of so there's a lot of different takes on this. You know, one of the takes is, "See, I told you, it's just it was a matter of time." There's a lot of like, "Oh, LTT, better watch out for this. It's the third shift." And then there's a lot of people that actually understand what's going on here, and that is that this manufacturer is fraudulently claiming that they make this screwdriver. It is possible that you will get something in the mail that it resembles our screwdriver, but I promise you, it will not be ours. Yeah. Um, And the attention to detail that it would take to get it to be ours would not be put in by this manufacturer. There is absolutely no way, because even though it's a seemingly relatively simple mechanical device, the devil's in the details. It's easy for them to make one. Actually, it would be relatively easy for them to make one screwdriver that pretty much is pretty similar to the LTT screwdriver, to mass produce it with the kind of quality that we do would be really difficult. And that's what took so long. Um, Yeah. So, so that's the thing. Yeah. Is that trickle down economics? Thanks, Twitch chat. I can always count on you. (laughs) Dan, I want to make another facial joke. LLD. How would you suggest verifying a user's child's age on social media without age verification? Just do it the, old mostly ineffective way yeah there's honestly i don't i just don't see how you're going to do it no yeah. database should contain that information about no. anyone least of all a child Kids. yeah no uh just yeah i'm sorry i don't have a solution to this uh and and lean on the services a little bit to ban users um if they're detected to you know 
not be a kid. Hey, DLL, how far away do you think AMD is from catching up to NVIDIA on ray tracing? Do you think they will? Sure. And then NVIDIA will move again. Uh, the only real hope for AMD is that NVIDIA gets distracted. Kind of like what happened with uh, Logitech and gaming mice in like the late late 2000s. Um, and like, I guess the early 20, late, two, late 2000s, early 2010s, Logitech owned gaming mice. And then they were just like, oh, a, a, a webcam butterfly. Holy crap, what the heck is Razer? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is a, a, that is an accurate recreation. It's actually that's, quite that's, accurate. That's, that's exactly think. what happened. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a little frustrated with Logitech right now. Um, my, my mouse died again. I've had a lot of this one mouse. Um, let me find... Logitech G. I, I have been, uh, I think it's maybe fair to say a Logitech fanboy for most of my life. Their, their forms for their mice just work for my hands. And their support is, or at least has been, legendary. Fantastic. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to win me over with really, really good support. And I've really, really, really liked their mice. Now, they released a thing called the Power Play. Yeah, I love my power play. Oh my goodness, the power play is amazing. Okay. The fact that more people don't use it drives me nuts. It's really expensive, Luke. It is very you expensive. You probably didn't pay for it. I did, actually. Oh. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Did you pay for the most that went on it? I paid for the most recent one that's going to go on it. I don't know about all the previous ones. Okay. I, I paid for the most recent one and the previous one before I that. I just mean your tech life gets kind of subsidized. So it when you splurge bit. on a thing... Totally I'm a little makes impressed sense. Totally that you bought sense. anything, yeah. but then I'm, I'm less impressed because the total cost of your entire setup is like maybe a grand or two, <laughs> and it's worth like, you know, maybe, five grand or whatever, less you know? Than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's totally fair. It is, it is very expensive. I just really, really like the Me too. Play. I really like it too. It's just Fantastic really, product. really expensive for what it is. Like the, the thing, the problem it solves in your life is that every couple of weeks you need to go like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome. I know it's awesome. I know. <laughs> it doesn't even it doesn't even increase the amount of USBs because you no. can connect your mouse through the power play, which is like thank you. I know, but That's the flip so side of that argument is it doesn't even reduce the number of cables on your desk because you still have to run a fucking cable to the power play. <laughs> like it's just it's, I'm just I'm just happy they thought of that. It's you just know? it's just actually a waste of money. Yeah. That I love. And you love. Yes. And we can love it, even though it's a waste of money. It's like <laughs> children. <laughs> Or my employment. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, right now, if I go to gaming mouse pads on Logitech G, the photo is for a power play. Mm -hmm. Where are you going with this? I don't see it. Oh, because it isn't a mouse pad. It's probably something else. You're also in the Canadian store. Here's, I don't believe you're allowed oh yeah, to buy it. It's not available in, in Canada. I can't buy it in Canada. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so you can only have it because you are a special snowflake. Wait, is that the reason why I ran into this? I hope not. Okay. Here. I love that you can sort by power play compatibility. Yeah, okay. So here's my whole point. Pro X Super Light 2. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Power play compatibility. No. Well, try power play instead of power play compatibility. Go up. There's a power play. What? Four down. Yeah. Well, it's just the same thing as power play compatibility. That's hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, no, you can't you can't buy it in Canada, I don't think. I mean, Canada doesn't exist anyway. It doesn't, anyways, it doesn't so. say it works with PowerPlay. Though. You can probably buy it on like amazon.co.uk and like get it imported or whatever, but no, I don't think you can buy it in Canada. Uh, I'm so upset. Yeah, I know. I bought a to be fair, I didn't look into reviews of the Superlight 2, but I bought a Pro X Superlight because the Superlight 2 was not listed under PowerPlay compatibility. I already opened the box. It's on my desk. I'm screwed. <laughs> At least it's not me who's an idiot on the show oh, for a change. Man. You know, it's refreshing, actually. That sucks. Why doesn't it show up under power play compatibility? Why is there two power play buttons? I don't know. That isn't even the thing I wanted to be upset about. I'm actually more happy with them about this because that's easy to fix. I thought they dropped power play compatibility from new devices. And I was like, wow, that sucks a lot. No, PowerPlay's great. 
And Power Sweet. Play's not going anywhere as far as I can tell. That's great. I'd love to I see really it updated like it. with a bigger mat and maybe USB C or you know, something. Or yeah, anything. that'd be cool. Man. People saying I didn't do the research. I I went on the official website and clicked power play compatibility and it disappeared. I I thought I did do the research. <sighs> I really like the mouse. I think it's okay to be honest. But yeah, I had th I've had three G nine oh threes now. And the left click is broken on every single one of them. It's almost like all of those switches just come from a commodity factory and Logitechs are not special. Yeah. People game pretty hard these days too. Like, they, I don't know, man. I feel like, uh, I feel like we go a little harder on our gaming peripherals. That might be true. Like when I was a kid, I played a lot of video games, but I think by today's standards, it's like not a lot. Not really. Much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It might, it might be reasonable lifespan. I haven't looked into like the expected clicks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and I'm not ditching them because it's still my favorite mouse. Like I'll go, I'll go try. I did get a different Logitech mouse this time, but I like this one too. Their forms just work so much better for me. And I mean, it feels great. So like, I don't, I mean, I regret not knowing that the two works with it, but uh, I'm happy with it anyways. So that's fine. Hello, WAN.DLL. Luke, other than the difficulty of building a kick-ass streaming platform, yeah. what is an interesting challenge as CTO for LMG that we haven't heard you talk about before? Oh, you've heard it all before. Okay. Um, entering, entering as that role into the hell nest that was the setup was a wild experience that I would not want to do again um, and is still like a giant problem. Um, the, the, the constant battle between trying to decide whether or not to fix the current fires or build a thing that will help reduce new fires is, is difficult to deal with because there's so many like massive projects that you would have expected to be done a really long time ago that were never done um, that we need to do, but there's a lot of current fires. So balancing those two problems can be difficult. Yada, 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 yada. It's all a thing, but it's getting better. Sean's been doing fantastic. It's been cool seeing him in videos now, um, working with Dan and yeah, AJ on great, that hey? team too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's getting better. We'll get there. It's okay. But it's, it, it, it's been a ride. I'll say that much. The Super Light 2 appears to be on Amazon.ca. I bought a mouse. It's on my desk. I'm not going to buy another mouse. It was really expensive. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not buying another mouse right now. Straight up. Uh, I'm responding to a merch message that hasn't been read yet. Um, Thomas C. says, Hey, LTT. I wish that more people would talk about accessibility with VR. I have one eye. There are some VR games where I physically can't get past the tutorial. Can you try the Vision Pro with one eye? Oh, um, interesting. The scanning didn't work, but I wonder if part of the reason for that is that I trained it with two eyes. So I'm going to see if I can find the thing to try it again. Uh, buh -buh 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 -buh, uh, I don't know. I can never remember. Is it privacy and security or is it optic ID and passcode? I don't know. Why would security, why would your passcode be under security? That's just stupid. Um, gaze tracking works, which sounds like an entirely different thing. Um, While well, you keep screwing around with that, a geek person man in chat said power play compatible means the mouse requires a power core module to be installed in the mouse and power play means it's just built in. Cool. All right, I'm setting up optic ID. The gaze tracking is definitely a little bit weaker though. Makes sense. Nope, won't do it. Ooh. No optic ID with just one eye. Yep, can confirm, definitely works with two eyes. Uh, all right. So apparently the Apple Vision you know. Pro has accessibility options. Maybe there's Ooh. something you need to turn on. Accessibility. I input both eyes. Oh, 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 left eye only, right eye only. All right, there it is. I still don't know if that works with Optic ID, but it definitely um, does at least have an option for it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, good guy, Apple. That's it for that for now. I find it makes my eyes really tired. Using that? Yeah. I'm back.
I haven't used it for the because you were using it for like whole days, right? I've used it for as much as um, like three hours at a time, and that was a lot. Yeah, like, that makes really sense. a lot. Like I, I didn't have it on for that long, realistically. Um, and I didn't run into those problems, but I suspect you're hitting more around the like hour, hour and a half mark where it starts to get pretty old. Yeah. Yeah. Even at like half an hour, I'm kind of over it. I'd rather just, you know what? One of the, one of the things that really bugs me is uh, seems like a really stupid little thing. It seems like such an obvious fix, but, um, I actually hate that I can only pin apps in 3d space. I want to pin apps in relative to me space. Oh, you can't do that? Not as far as I can tell, but this is yet another thing that I, I haven't spent a ton of time looking up how to do things I, yet. I, I'm thinking on, on like what I've seen online in videos. People and say stuff. you can. You can. So okay. then, okay. okay, then that's something that will help a lot because... Yeah. Sorry, keep going. Uh, travel mode apparently is what it's called. So yeah, I'm going to play mm. around with that. Um, it's not going to fix every issue that I have with it because realistically most of my problems are just caused by that. I just don't really want this thing on my face right now. Um, it would be nice if you could do both. Like I would want to have some that were fixed in 3d space and some that floated with me. Uh, you could probably, I could, I would imagine that you could probably do that. Maybe. Oh, wait, not yet. Travel mode is only really made for airplane usage, etc. Speaking of airplane usage, I was I'm sitting don't walk with travel mode though okay well then that's not really okay then that's not really what i'm talking about okay i'm gonna insert now so oh i've seen a video of someone walking down the street with google maps pinned okay i'll have to figure it out um but yeah that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about that i want to move around and i want it to just stay fixed to me rather than fixed to the environment and it sounds like what you're talking about is travel mode um figures out where something is based on its proximity to the headset rather than based on the map the headset builds of the world around you because of low light so i noticed that i was sitting in um my computer room at home and you know how our lights are automated and just turn off uh, so in what would be probably like cabin cabin brightness on an overnight flight it was not able to handle tracking very well it would it would often lose tracking and have connection issues and, and, and hand tracking issues. So that makes a ton of sense that travel mode would be for like that. That's what travel mode is, is a way to not have it reliant on that outside map that it's building. But that's not what I was asking for. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to have to do a little bit more figuring out. I'm sure. I mean, unless that video is just fake. But I, I've definitely seen Could be. persons walking down the yeah absolutely. I've seen a person walking down the street and the the I'm assuming Apple Maps or whatever, but some form of map application was fixed on the left hand side of their view. No problem, Captain Cosmo. Hit me, Dan. Hey, DLL. Speaking of AI fakes, how do you expect the world to adapt to combat this? We all know laws mean nothing, especially when millions are at play. Should we be going back to carrier pigeons? <laughs> I think there's not a bad suggestion in person. Yeah. S someone made a comment earlier about our handshake deals back. I had a conversation about this $25 million thing with my roommate a day or two ago. And we were both talking about how like, yeah. If you needed to transfer $25 million, should someone just fly there and like do the deal? Or, or even like if you, if you need it's to get wild. a confirmation, like, oh, the, the CFO was on the call or whatever. Like, it's $25 million. Maybe you should go to the CFO's office. Yeah. And, like, see them in person. Just to be like, hey, just confirming, you know. And, like, you're going to have to work at a place where that doesn't seem weird. <laughs> so you'll have to, like, inform people around that <clears throat> you need this extra layer. I mentioned maybe you have to call them on their cell phone as well as, like, a form of two-factor for communication. Uh, so, okay, you have, you have like, uh, someone on teams tells you to transfer 25 million or someone in a, uh, video call tells you to transfer 25 million. Okay. Well you call them as well and you might see them on the video, like answer their cell phone and be like, Hey, uh, but if someone has their team's account and they have their cell phone, like that's, that's another fairly significant step. Um, Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, go for it. So apparently uh, Ryan Trahan did it, but he had to pinch on the app to hold it there while he was like walking. Oh yeah, that's not what I'm asking for. No, for sure. I, I'm, I'm aware just, of that. I've done that. That probably explains the video I saw though. Was- that, it, yep, that yeah. explains it. So the fact that that workaround is necessary and the fact that this made it to actual release with no one being like, oh yeah, that's the thing we should obviously do is just sort of baffling to yeah. me, especially if they have this travel mode where they map relative to the headset rather than relative to the map created from the environment around you. I just, sure. Fake yeah. pinched finger stick. Oh, genius. <laughs> genius. You could like sucker it onto your chest. And Terrible. Like- I love it. I love it. Uh, Linus question. Why are you still running the damaged Note 9? I honestly was expecting you to have moved to the Samsung 24 Ultra by now. Mostly curious. Um, Once again, the answer is going to be a lot less cool than what you might imagine. It is a ton of work with all of my, like, setting up my notification settings in every app so that the things I need get to me and the things I don't need don't bother me, and authenticating all the bajillion things that I have to sign into. Uh, It's just, it's a ton of work for me to switch phones, and I had intended to switch over to the Fairphone, so I, for that review, man, I put in the work so that I wouldn't have to carry my Note 9 with me at all. With the LG Wing, I carried the Note 9 for like 2FA. Like I, I didn't really use it, but I like I knew I wasn't seriously switching to the LG Wing. I made myself use it, but I didn't I didn't put my whole life on it. With the Fairphone 5, I did. I was like, I am switching to this phone. They're going to support this thing for seven years or whatever it is. So this will be like, even if I move on to another phone after this, this will be the one that will like have all my stuff, you know, like that that social media uh, or that um, that messaging app that I only use to communicate with people I play badminton with in Taiwan. Like I'm going to install that one on there and migrate all my messages over and all this tedious crap. I don't like going through that. So upgrading phones for me is actually a hassle. And maybe part of it is just like like PTSD from doing it so many times back when I would be reviewing a different phone every month or two. Like I think a lot of people were like, oh, Line is so lucky. He gets to use new phones all the time. I freaking hated it. It sucks. It's so annoying. It's not a good experience. No, it actually sucks. Um, so I gave up on it and I switched to the Note 9. So it has my whole life on it. And I, I did that with the Fairphone 5 and it ended up being a complete f- waste of time because spoiler alert is this a Fairphone 5 yeah I'm done the review yeah <laughs> um, so I don't know I'll switch to something else at some point I I, I, I would consider an S24 Ultra I, I just nothing has sung to me I like I liked the folding phones though that was cool I, I switched over to the Fold 3 actually Dan I still owe you that Fold 3 uh, I need to get my pictures off of it, and then as far as I'm concerned, you can do whatever you want with it. I told him if he if he fixed it, fixed it, then he could use it. Uh, I've just been really slow. Sorry, Dan. It's sitting on my desk at home. I you, will do you don't, it. You don't have to. I mean, I hate all phones now because you ruined the last one that I loved. Well, Dan, that's... No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. Once I say something, then I have to. It's it's not up to you to decide if I have to. I okay. Have, I have said I'm doing it, therefore... All right. Therefore, all right. I'll do it. That, 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 I just don't want you to feel forced by social okay. convention. No, I'm forced by me. I'm forced by because I said I was going to do something. Okay. Um, very, very simple. To me, a verbal contract is a contract. Um, anywho, the point is that I, I just um, don't like doing it. <laughs> and to me, the three extra seconds, or actually on this thing in some cases, 30 extra seconds that I might wait for an app to install on the rare occasion that I bother to install an app on my phone uh, is just not yeah. worth the trade-off of the three hours that I'm going to spend migrating everything and then the occasional you know, three to 30 minutes that it's going to cost me down the road when I realize there was something I missed and I need to go back and deal with it. It's just such a pain. Hello, Wan, Wook, and Wynus. Does Floatplane give you any interesting cross statistics with YouTube? For example, are there any similarities or differences for video retention? Original Floatplane invoice 314. Yeah, Luke. Um, 
Tell me, what kind of analytics does Floatplane provide, and how do they compare to the YouTube analytics? Very fantastic analytics. We have the best. My friends tell me that we have the best analytics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how you know it was the biggest lie of the show. <laughs> We have basically none. Uh, there's certain <laughs> things that we can ask AJ to like manually pull up or ask Jonathan to manually pull up. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's pretty much nothing. Um, I don't think it's... You know they don't use Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like there's, there's stuff we can check. Um, we have nothing. We don't even know how many views we're getting. I know AJ's here. We can guess, but like basically, it's it's a basically all guessing. So it's just like I don't know, whatever. Yeah, YouTube's guessing. They just have the best guessing. They are extremely good at it. Yeah. Um, but like that's taken a lot of effort. So I don't know. We would have to have an entire team that is much larger than the entire float plane team that just did <laughs> yeah. that if we wanted to even approach. I mean, what you're and we, about. we we could get pretty accurate probably, but like ad ad blockers block a lot of stuff that aren't ads, um, and a lot of you guys run ad blockers. So it makes certain things unnecessarily hard. To be clear, when you're on Floatplane running an ad blocker, we don't care. There's no ads on Floatplane. It actually has zero impact other than that we no, can't build we, analytics. We do care though. Oh, uh, we do? Because there's, there's, more than, there's more than just like views analytics that we can't capture. We also can't. It also oh. muddies the waters of capturing a lot of other things. Like, well, what would they care about though? I, I have to go back over it again. Well, what would they care about? Nothing. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just affects us and our ability to know how the site's being used uh, to to oh, see how well to, like, videos plan are infrastructure being and like. Okay, I understand. Do like that. I, it's been a long time right. since I've had this conversation, so I might be saying things that are slightly off. But it's like, it's definitely not helpful. Troubleshooting info for us. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it blocks us being able to figure out troubleshooting stuff. I understand there are sites out there that are pulling information to like sell by doing those mm -hmm. types of things. So I get it and I'm not telling anyone to whatever. This isn't, this isn't that conversation. Um, but it is annoying when you're like actually just trying to do good things and it becomes inaccurate or you can't or whatever else because of that stuff. Um, Okay. Q QS info for ISPs. Yeah, that makes figuring out routing problems really hard when you can't figure out routing problems. Got it. Um, like it's, yeah, it's, it's super annoying. Um, but again, I get it. Um, it's just, yeah. We if you're try. someone like Google, you can find workarounds. You can do various things. You can sure. improve it. Um, at our scale, it's like, oh man. Is there an option to not bother? Yes. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Duke, Linux, and Don, good evening. Duke, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. You should play it. Linux, yeah. if you had to choose Final Fantasy VI Remake or Tactics Remake or Sequel. Ooh. 26, That's a pretty good question. 26 actually. years later, I still play FFT. Well, Final Fantasy Tactics has a sequel, so I'm not going to ask for that. Um, if you're asking if I would want like a worthy sequel, like as good or better in every way, you know what? I'd I'd pick Six Remake. I think I'd find it easier to find the time to play that. I a tactics game would just completely absorb my life, and so that's a very selfish reason for choosing that. <laughs> but you asked me, so I guess it that's can, fair. It can be a me reason. That's if, legit. If I got like a like a, a real reimagining of six, I think. Oh, but then would I like hate it because it's not what I like and remember? No, I, I think I, I would love to. I would love to hear Tara's story retold. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. Odd question about the business side. As you build out your merchandise for sale, how do you figure oh, out the... Wait, hold on. I'm oh. not done with that yet, though. Have you played any more Six? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, but I probably will be this weekend. All right, forget it. Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry I even said anything. Odd question about the business side. As you build out your merchandise for sale, how do you figure out the design, labor, handling costs behind the product itself so to stay profitable? Uh, until Taryn joined, we just didn't. <laughs> We uh, we eyeballed it. Uh, that's, that's on brand. 
<laughs> See, this is why we have to take away their Excel because they're not even using it. Yeah. Um, oh, they're still using it. You know, there, there are people who use it, Dan. Uh, but I'm, like, I'm, yeah, we, we knew approximately what our handling was from our 3PL because we know how much we pay them every month and we know how many orders they handled, but we don't know a lot of the fine details around... Um, especially like product development costs. Like I have no idea. Yvonne might know how much we spend on samples for clothing, for example. I doubt it. Um, like she could maybe look it up. It would be somewhat challenging. Um, we, uh, Nick says we didn't eyeball, uh, we didn't eyeball everything. The only thing we didn't factor was OPEC on a per unit basis. Uh, I, I am pretty sure that there are other things that we did not fully, um, fully map out, but I know that we, I know that we knew, okay. So just to be clear, we weren't completely flying blind. I like, have no idea. I know what our income, we knew what our incoming costs were approximately for like, uh, shipping and handling. Um, okay. But there's, okay, here's something that, that here's something that we just had no idea about was, uh, what our returns were costing. We were just like, oh, uh, we, we think it's like within this range. And it was somewhere pretty close to that range once we drilled into it a bit more. But there were clearly some things that were just like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we kind of were kicking the can down the road. And like, in fairness to the team, I'm not throwing them under the bus. They were busy building new products and growing the, the, growing the revenue and, uh, you know, figuring out how to how to keep up with shipments, and there were some things that fell through the cracks. There's some stuff that we've definitely got to clean up now, though, um, and so that's that's what we're working on. See, hi DLL. If AI becomes proficient at extracting benchmark data, uh, be benchmark detail from videos through speech or image recognition, would that change your lab's data plan and use it in LTD videos? No, at this point, we really want people to have the data. And so we are, we're still full steam ahead with testing and, and publishing data, um, you know, whether the full suite will be available to non-paid accounts and things like that, that's TBD. Um, like how we publish it is to be determined, but we, we want to test it. We want to publish it. Hey, DLL, cable management, when? But more importantly, what are your thoughts on digital identity, SSI, self-sovereign identity to combat AI impersonation? I mean, I think Luke and I have talked about that a fair bit on the show today. I, I just don't think that um, hmm. the only real solution is a decentralized one. Um, good luck. Yeah, good luck. AI identity on the blockchain. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Oh, it's web three's back boys hell yeah cable management though very soon speaking of the team being hard at work on things uh it's a surprisingly complicated product for us to bring to market it, it's it's not the kind of thing that i think is obvious to someone who's never tried to launch a product before but you can't just you can't just sell cable arch at price um because the back to the the question of handling costs that the handling cost of cable arch would make it completely unsustainable for us to sell at a price that would make any sense for you so we have to make bundles of cable arch or bundles of multiple different cable arches in configurations that maybe make sense we have to find a way to communicate that uh, we have to find a way to market it um we have to find a way to present all of that on the website Oh, we're running into a problem there. Oh, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's like it's a lot of options, <laughs> uh, and like d visually explaining what it is, and also having all the options and making it so that all the option combinations are not confusing, and all of that all at once is is it's a lot right now. Yeah. And, I don't think we have a fantastic current solution, but we are working on it. Um, had a call with uh, a bunch of people um, and there was some good ideas people were bringing up and we're going to try to figure it out. Right. I won't do much. All I've got left yeah. is uh, potentials. Luke, there's a lot in here for you. Sick. Oh, wow. It's just 
Luke for days. I'm going to go get some more snackies. Okay. I uh, I should have prompted you to how to read through of these. Uh, uh, do you want to parse them first? Then. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just give you a second here. You know, I'm very confused. I just, I, one of them, I just really, I don't understand how it starts, but I'll, I'll field the question anyways. Um, oh, L, LDL is a chemical. I think. Maybe. Is it? Yeah. Sure. Uh, we'll start with this one. Whatever. Uh, Luke, how do you select data centers for Floodplain? I just started looking into co-location, and there are so many options at wildly varying price points. Uh, this is a much better question for AJ if you're in if you're in Floatplain chat. AJ's hanging out in Floatplain chat right now. Um, but uh, my my thing that I'll add on is uh, a, a very frustrating <laughs> uh, task that I've given AJ over the years is that you know. We don't we don't have a VC budget, so things need to be pretty cheap. Uh, so so generally, it's been like, what's the cheapest possible way we can get this thing? Um, and then we use a lot of OVH. Uh, we're fairly in their kind of like ecosystem at this point, and they're they're very. I'm surprised to hear you talking about that. You're usually so cagey about uh, OVH. What? sort of services we use and what specifically we use them for for certain things yeah but ovh is very easy to figure out that we use it yeah you used to you used to be you used to not want to acknowledge it so i'm just oh yeah i think i've always been pretty open about ovh specifically oh oh no i remember specifically you were just like don't give them anything i'm like okay oh yeah Uh, that sounds like me (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but yeah ovh we we use and we use a lot um and it's it's been pretty good for us uh there's been there's been times where there's been bumps in the road but like but ovh uh, if you wanted to sponsor us and the reads were just we talk about our experience overall really good it'd be pretty chill really good and really cheap like very cost effective for what we get um and honestly talking to other people that are in other data centers and being in other data centers sometimes ourselves as well there's bumps in the road everywhere so like uh, we've had know. some we've had some doozies yeah but like i don't know cloudflare went down not that long ago google has gone down in uh, some mean, amount teams of time. was a disaster two weeks teams ago teams was like right this happens to everybody um so it, it kind of just is what it is overall the uptime through ovh has been super good um uh, I don't know. Yeah, OVH has been good. It's been a proven good strategy the entire time we've been there. That was an AJ thing from back in the day and a Jake thing, actually. Both of them. Um, so, yeah, we've sort of stuck there. And then we've also worked with other ones as well. But, yeah. Hi, bad cholesterol, LDL, low-density lipoprotein. Question for Luke. Uh, Have you heard of or tried the Skyrim companion mod where NPCs talk conversationally with you? I have heard of it. Uh, they all sound like AI, so I am not interested. Luke, Outlook lets you have different email handles for the same account and chooses which ones can be used for login. Isn't only using handles that can't be used for login the most secure system? I think that is super cool. I didn't actually know that. That's neat. I feel like you can do the same thing with Google Workspace. I'm not sure, though. Um, I know you can do the plus alias thing, which is super cool, but I don't know if you can completely change it. I think you can. Um, I know you can to a certain degree, but I, I don't, I don't know if you can use it in that exact way. Uh, but I, I know you can to a certain degree because, uh, I have that. So if you only emailed out of one that wasn't the core login, I feel like that would work. So yeah, I think so. I think it works on both effectively. And I think that is pretty smart. Yeah, AJ saying you can have a primary domain ID and then your email is different. Yeah, so that that seems like a good idea, smart idea. Hey, yo, WAN.dll. Question for Linus. As a fellow XR enthusiast, bullish on the monitor replacement use case is the immersed visor on your horizon. I think AVP, but one third the weight and cost. 
I uh, this is the first time hearing of it. I've never heard of this. It sounds pretty cool. It looks like what they have. Uh, they have apps for this colors theme makes me think of no, Ubuntu. I don't know, like why? What do you like? Is this just a link to Apple's website? Yep. Uh, what the interesting. Uh, I, it's on my radar now. Neat. Hmm. Last two potentials. Uh, well, I need to email this to myself, so I will not be helping. Luke. Got him. I'll curate this one. Go, sure. Luke. Luke, you come Ooh. across as putting a lot of thought and research into purchases. What sealed the deal for you when it came to Athletic Greens? This is a weird one. They're sponsored. Yeah, they kind of sponsored the show today, so... Uh, do you want me to I absolve no? you of any responsibility for getting the sponsorship canceled. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Uh-oh. Um, I'm just going to talk completely candidly, but I think it's mostly good stuff, to be honest, so it should be okay. Um, I gained a ton of weight over COVID. I was not eating very good things, and I was extremely inactive. When actually before that was kind of over, I hit a certain point where I was like, all right, I need to figure this out. So I started getting a lot more active and I started eating a lot better. But one of the ways that I started eating better was I started eating very regimented and I started eating a lot of the same things all the time. Um, and by restricting my diet to a certain degree, I wasn't getting as much of a range of different things. So I was worried about, um, not having good nutrient coverage. Essentially, I looked into a bunch of different solutions um, I tried a few different solutions. Um, I think AG1... Literal solutions. Yeah, actually. Uh, I think AG1 doesn't taste too bad. Um... Wow, what an endorsement. I'm, I'm not like Dennis. I don't think it tastes like pineapple and vanilla or whatever he says. I don't get that at all, but it tastes all right. Um... Where, where does... Where is it between pineapple and banana and ass? Pineapple and vanilla, I think, is what he says. Probably somewhere in the middle. Like I don't, I don't <laughs> okay. think it tastes great. But I also have had a bunch of other ones. You heard that I it think here, folks. Way worse. It's got a half-ass taste. <laughs> uh, I, I've had ones that are a lot worse. So, like, I, I wouldn't want a dog on it for its taste. And I, Dennis, isn't the only person that I know that has mentioned pineapple specifically. And he's not the only person that I know that think it tastes legitimately good. So I like actually don't want a dog on it for its taste. Um, yeah. And anything that is in the supplement realm is just super. It's an interesting area. I don't really want to mess with it. Um, AG one is, seems to be fairly reputable as far as I can tell. Um, they seem to be pretty legit and I go with it for that reason. Mostly. I did, I did quite a bit of research. There's a, there's a bunch of people saying that there's like uh, equivalent alternatives that are cheaper. But then I, when I was looking into those, I would often find not always, but I would often find threads of people talking about how, um, Oh, the way that they make something or whatever is not up to whatever, whatever. I don't know, blah, 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 stuff that I don't understand enough about. And it seemed to be more legit, more trustworthy to me. I don't know. I'm not saying that you should take my research and be like, well, I'll just get it then. This is not part of the ad at all. I have no idea. I am not an expert on this. I know nothing. Um, but it seemed legit and I understand it was a bunch more money, but it's, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm a little sketched out by supplementation in general, but it's something that I did want to do. So I went with that one because it seemed the safest. I don't know. That's it. And last one I've got here, got my 13-inch framework in last week, and I'm loving it. Do you have any updated thoughts on future GPU upgrades for the now 16, for the new 16 coming out? Uh, P.S. Unpopular opinion, no beard is better. That is an unpopular opinion. What um, the hell's wrong with you? I don't have any updated thoughts other than that hopefully Framework can find partners who will continue to develop GPU modules for it, and we will get some choice in GPUs. I mean, hopefully we just get some choice in GPU options that don't suck in general, and that yeah. would benefit Framework. And, yeah. everyone. and that's it for the WAN Show. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye.